Empire Hall, that is the other building hall. There is a pathway uh, connecting these two buildings. So since there is uh, rain, you may utilize that path from the second hall, floor of this uh, building to the next building. There is a pathway that is opened.
it's who have gathered I'm pioneering work in endoscopic and microscopic scalping surgery. He is well known for the revolutionary works in integrated thyroplasty, angiofibroma, convergent approaches to facial nerve and parodic concepts in
annual Kerala State AOE conference. Thank you. So happy Thank to have you. you. All pleasure is mine, sir. All pleasure is mine, and I am rather indebted to the entire AOI Kerala team for uh, inviting me to be part of this occasion for this state conference being held in Kollam. I I apologize for uh, not being there personally, but happy to be part of this event anyway. And big thanks to the organizing team. A special thanks to the. Secretary Dr. Anish Krishnan and the entire team, the President Dr. Sunil, Dr. Lakshmi Priya, Dr. Sanju, and the everybody. And I am so happy to have two young guys, uh, Dr. Arun and Dr. Anand, being here in our theater from Kerala. So being a part of this event here. Thank you, thank you once again. So uh, the event is uh, going to be live surgical cases. And we have lined up a couple of cases. To begin with is a case for sinus surgery. This is a case of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis where I'm going to start and I uh, will demonstrate the full house surgery. Then this will be followed by a case of JNA with some peculiar extensions. Then again, a case advanced case uh, for sinus surgery requiring draft and orbital transposition with a massive fungus. Then we have a couple of other cases, uh, if time permits, like parotidectomy, superficial parotidectomy, stepidotomy, and many more. Uh, till 4 o'clock, I think I've been given time. So whatever maximum we can do, we'll go ahead. I hope okay. it is okay. Okay, sir. I'm sure it'll be a pleasure oh, watching you. Laptop. So the first case, um, you'll get quickly the uh, CT scan on screen. Can you? Yeah, yeah, can see. Very clear. So, so there's a young patient, 14 year old, with a classical presentation of nasal blockage, or, you know, rhinorrhea and all that. On endoscopy, multiple polypi in the nasal cavity on the right side. Then we had a scan, and this is a, you know, scan on dicom. This is 1 mm scan. See this 1 mm scan on the left corner. This we got before a um, uh, patient got it done before coming to us and this is the axial section where these scans are shot and we can reformat with our software into all three planes to get maximal you know uh, dynamic information which is very very important for any surgical exercise before any surgical exercise i would say so let me take you to the positive findings you know CT has traditionally been, you know, shot in the coronal plane. We used to get printouts, static films, which to me is never so useful as the dynamic CT, which we get through the uh, uh, dicom imaging. Here we can see the information in all planes. Axial, sagittal are useful for certain areas. They give certain useful information which coronals do not give. And here, what you see classically this picture. See this classical picture of unilateral disease, maximal sinus fullness, sinuses being expanded, boundaries being pushed beyond the sinus, you know, limits, and some heterogeneous densities inside, which is classical for allergic fungal rhinosinusitis. This is how Bent and Kuhn criteria, if you refer to, with nasal polyps, such classical heterogeneous densities, then, you know, fungal staining, uh, or if you get the stain, then you'll get fungal positive. And see, this is the disease occupying all sinuses unilaterally and trying to push the boundaries beyond the confines. This is classical and this is classically found in young people, unilateral disease or the period of time it can become bilateral as well. But this is classical allergic disease where the patient being allergic to some fungus. Since we inhale fungus uh, as a fungus being a part of the you know environment, this is ubiquitous in the environment. And if somebody is allergic to fungus whenever he is inhaled, the body can react, the eosinophilic activity comes into action 
and this kind of a picture is developed when the fungus is trapped in the sinuses and the eosinophil secrete the classical material around the fungus and becomes a classical picture of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis so this classic mucin you will see intraoperatively is peculiar for allergic fungal sinusitis there are so many variants of crs now every variant has a different underlying pathophysiology afrs is a very common variant with some peculiar features like this you have seen the unilateral disease in young patient with classical heterogeneous densities classical mucin this being a non invasive fungus there is no role of antifungals this is a pure reaction body's reaction to the fungal material this is a type 1 hypersensitivity so like any other type 1 hypersensitive condition in the body here also the same treatment the treatment of choice is steroid goal of sinus surgery is multi pronged here we have to remove this antigen antigen is fungus we have to remove the fungus which is behaving like an ant antigen and body is reacting to that antigen with the eosinophilic reaction so the goal of surgery is to remove this fungus which is antigen establish the sinuses drainage and ventilation which is the principal you know core principle of sinus surgery to establish the ventilation and drainage and third is to give wide wide opening for future surveillance and topical installation of steroid as steroid being the co treatment rather than giving orally you can push topically deep into the sinuses which is the site of disease so the need of oral steroid can be much reduced in future that's a three prong goal of sinus surgery so the ct scan we can quickly touch upon the positive finding see this in coronal if i go from anterior to posterior see the first structure what we see is the frontal bone with two nematized bone with two unequal sinuses divided by the intersinus septum the right being opacified and in the floor is the nasal bone see the internasal suture and the frontal nasal processes as we go behind this is the beak of the frontal bone the beak this is the frontal beak which forms the floor of the sinus see classically beak is such a great landmark and today for all uh, junior colleagues who are finding difficulty in dealing with the frontal sinuses my special focus would be on frontal sinus to make it simplest for you in life see the biggest landmark what you need to focus on the beak beak forms the floor of the frontal sinus let me show in all planes see the sagittal plane see the sagittal plane this is frontal sinus this is frontal sinus and this is the beak if we come from anteriorly the first biggest thing the thickest bone we come across in the superior part anterior superior part is the beak and this beak forms the floor of the frontal sinus as well as the anterior wall in the lower part see if you follow the beak that's a great landmark any other abnormal anatomy abnormal anatomy is very common among sinuses you know abnormal cellularity abnormal dimensions are very common in sinuses overall but the beak never changes there could be change in the size of the beak beak is the thickest bone in this region and it never changes so see when we come from here anteriorly the the biggest the thickest bone we come across the beak and if we follow this as a landmark the moment the beak is crossed it has to be frontal sinus it never changes finding the beak is very easy i will show you and if you follow the beak where the beak ends behind is the frontal sinus as simple as that whatsoever the anatomical changes cellularity changes dimension changes whatsoever this relationship never changes because the beak forms the floor as well as the anterior wall of the uh, the frontal sinus so we'll follow the beak as a sole landmark and then go into the frontal sinus identify the frontal sinus then widen it to the maximum to the limits will show intraoperatively so radiology takes you to see how the beak is related to the frontal sinus see here so what i was showing you the coronal section now going behind as long as beak is there your sinus is there now as we know 
the sinus drains from behind where the beak ends. See, I'm going behind. This is the beak. And now beak is ending. So now beak is ending means this is frontal recess. Frontal outflow. This is behind the beak. And this is how the frontal sinus drains from behind. So this is drainage pathway of frontal sinus. See, this is the cell in the floor. Before the beak is ending, this is the aganeji. And as the beak ends, now see, this is the orbit on this side. This is the orbit on this side. Some bone is descent. As you go behind, see this, the ethmoids, compare the ethmoids of both sides. See the small dimension of the ethmoid cavity and see the big one. Expanded. This is because of the fungal material and the eosinophilic material. There is expansion of the sinuses beyond the limits. See the orbital plate, which was here, the bone, is compressed laterally to compress the orbit, giving proptosis. See, this is expansile erosion of the bone, not invasive. The fungus is not invading the mucosa. It is expanding, which is molding the bone, and bone is expanded, and that's how it is expanding towards the orbit. Okay? So, this is expansile bony erosion. And see the orbital bony erosion. You have to be very careful. This uh, finding is very important while working in the ethmoid cavity. We are not supposed to breach into the orbit and give complications. Now, as you go behind now, see until now, there was no maxillary sinus. As long as you saw the frontal sinus, there was no maxillary sinus. <laughs> now, as the frontal disappears, the maxillary starts coming into picture. Because it is a posterior anatomy. Frontal is more anterior anatomy. And now, you see this expansile, see the unequal level of or skull base. This is the level of the ethmoidal roof on this side. This is the level of the ethmoidal roof on that side. That is because of expansion of the ethmoidal roof by the frontal sinus. This is very important to observe this from safety point of view. If you are not aware of this, one can easily give, you know, uh, a breach in the skull base and CSF leak. So, be careful, this radiology is telling you everything. This is a high deviation of the nasal septum. See this high deviation towards the opposite side. This is again because of the expensile erosion. See the turbinate on this side, the thick turbinate, middle turbinate being attached to the uh, junction of lateral and medial lamella, this thick turbinate. And look at the turbinate on this side. Compressed because of the expensile mass lesion that is fungal and the eosinophilic material. So, it is all expansion, compressing the turbinate, might be compressing the bulla, uncinate, everything you are going to find distorted. Then, as you go behind, see the front, uh, the, ethmoid, uh, the, the maxillary sinus, nasal cavity, ethmoid sinus, all full of this fungal material. See the hydrogenous density, if I change the contrast, con change the window setting, see all this hydrogenous density is fungus. This is fungus and this is speckled bony erosion because of the expansion everywhere. See the erosion, speckled erosion of the uh, lamina papyracea, skull base bone. Now, as we go behind, as we go behind, see the opposite side absolutely normal. As we go behind now, this is the post-sithmoid roof coming and see this is bony erosion at the level of the post-sithmoid roof. There is only dura, the bone is eroded because of the expensile nature of the lesion. As you go behind, see the skull base is eroded everywhere. As you go behind, as you go behind. Now see the intersinus septum. This phenoid sinus is eroded. This is the rostrum and behind the intersinus septum is eroded. And see this lesion is, you know, uniformly occupying both sinuses. There could be thin septation which might be pushed to the opposite side or completely eroded. So this is the sphenoid sinus, which is a common sinus now, and in order to approach the sphenoid sinus as a common cavity from this side, we might need to improve the exposure by removing the rostrum, like we do in, you know, expanded approaches to the skull base, like in pituitary surgery, you can say, in a simplified manner. See the sphenoid roof. The sphenoid roof is eroded. Here the sphenoid roof is eroded. See the level of the optic now on this side and level of the optic nerve in this side. The optic nerve is completely decent. Many times such present patient present with vision loss because of the 
inflammation of the optic nerve and then it requires an emergency you know removal of this inflammation this fungal disease to restore the vision so here you will you have to be ultra safe not using any sharp instrument in the sphenoid sinus as there is a lot of fungus being uh, you know occupied there and the optic now completely decent then as you go behind as you go behind that's the optic now that's the you know the level of the carotid canal on this side may or may not be decent as you go behind there's a complete you know common cavity of the sphenoid kind of a thing as the septation is intersinus septum is destroyed and this or could be this is the pushed intersinus septum pushing and uh, making this uh, opposite sinus very very small that could be intersinus septum behind which is not visible anteriorly so as far as the positive finding is concerned uh, there are uh, you know boundaries are distorted there is expansile erosion classical unilateral disease and the goal is to remove all this fungus and eosinophilic material establish the ventilation drainage of all sinuses by making entrostomies and give wide wide opening for penetration of you know future topical steroid that's the goal so that will be my three point goal anything uh, this was in brief about the ct scan anything you want me to show more on ct scan or any question on radiology before we move on to the surgical part no, please sir, i think this model is very clear okay fine thank you so much so in couple of minutes we'll be uh, with you with the endoscopic picture okay. and okay, meantime sir. any questions we can take or during surgery also feel free to interrupt me any time for your questions and suggestions do you do you go for any preoperative medical treatment such cases yes. such cases yes preparation is important that starts preoperatively you know uh, even before uh, weeks or days before the surgery to improve the surgical field to reduce the inflammation this is inflammatory disease we all know and inflammation of the mucosa is responsible for vasodilatation and more and more bleeding in order to reduce the bleeding to identify the landmarks better because this surgery has a narrow safety margin and in this particular case where the boundaries are deficient distorted expanded even the slightest sub millimeter distortion you know disorientation can lead to a major complication fatal complication so the visualization has to be maintained and that is possible by means of improving the surgical field and for that you need to start anti inflammatory treatment days or weeks before surgery and we'll do some intra operative preparation as well i will show you so before that we start in such cases eosinophilic disease the oral steroid prednisolone in tapering doses to reduce the inflammation as uh, minimum as possible and then intra operative preparation i will show the goal is one and only to reduce the inflammation to improve the surgical field to reduce the overall bleeding to improve your identification of landmarks better so you start for pre op steroid 3 weeks only yes sir prednisolone Pred in tapering doses yes sir okay. so then uh, do you uh, uh, get the baseline uh, ige before surgery yes always okay. ige in this disease particularly eosinophilic disease is elevated there is exponential elevation of ig particularly in afr cases okay. because this is pure ig mediated disease eosinophilic mediated disease allergic disease and ig has to be elevated and that gives you an idea fairly good idea of the ongoing allergic process that dictates post operatively after the healing is over the proper skin prick allergic testing and if possible immunization so whenever allergic phenomena is there ig is elevated and you have to keep a track on it even on follow up isn't it hmm even on follow up ig values even on follow up actually it can it can point towards recurrence as it i mean this is control as well post operative 
Yes. So we'll ensure topical steroid reaching everywhere that will curtail the allergic reaction. Okay. Hello, sir. Doctor, can you give pre-operative antibiotics for the operation? Pardon? Do you give pre-operative antibiotics for the operation? Antibiotics are not so useful in eosinophilic disease. But yes, if there is documented secondary infection, it is advisable. What is but the they are not the they are not the first line, you know, treatment. It's not the first line. I was just asking. Do we have a preference for antibiotics? Any antibiotic you can use amoxiclave. If you have a culture directed choice, then obviously you have to go. But it is mostly the staph aureus which is responsible. So whatever antibiotic used should be directed towards staph aureus. Okay. Okay, sir. We can continue discussion and uh, we'll be uh, with you with the endoscopic picture soon. Okay. What is happening? Uh, sir. sir, yes, sir. So, there's a question from the audience What is the CT reading software you are using? This is Radiant Dicom Viewer. You can download. Okay. okay. This is versatile, can read all CT and MRI and many other imaging modalities. Already said that he is for three weeks in the tapering dose. Three operative. People do so that they talk so that it's a gray zone. Still, when, how, systemic steroids, how you give, when all should you give, it's a real risk. That's why the talking about IG, when it is coming up, when the level is getting elevated, actually. We could put a spurt of cigarettes in between. The idea here is for the sake of audience, the idea here is to do a full house test. And the idea of full house test is to widely open the sinuses, entire sinuses, so that it facilitates, gives a corridor for your post operative therapy, steroid therapy. And uh, that is targeted therapy into the sinuses, without which, anyway, you cannot maintain patients on systemic steroids or systemic anti inflammatory. So that is the idea. That is, that is it.
that's, so that's really true. That's a million dollar question. But 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 uh, it need not be viewed in that. Because a lot of lot of situations where it is like that. And eventually, and even uh, sir, eventually it becomes like that. Though it is unilateral, eventually, even in this case, if you see, look carefully, you can see the spinoid sinus. Spinoid sinus, it has gone to the other side. So it need not be unilateral. Possibly the original criteria by Brenton could be actually just put to unilateral. But I think, I think uh, for uh, if you take, take the percentage, 30 to 40 percent is like that. Uh, those cases will come to you. I'm very sure about that. Uh, I mean, possibly you are getting referral cases, possibly that's a reason, right? But, 30 to 40 percent is bilateral. Majority of the cases are looking at, but one, but you have bilateral cases. So, so no, so now there, there are no risks. Yes, and if you look at this, this guy, you can see that the other side is also, it's also slightly inflated, not completely normal. Even the atmospheric side of the see some because possibly. After a few months or years, right? I mean, I am not sure whether he is planning on that. At least there is an osteomatal block there. So logically, the idea is no, no. The logically idea is to remove the antigen. It's not just inflammation. Antigenic load is the idea. You have to reduce the antigenic load. That is why the that is one one purpose of surgery. Widely open. Widely open. So, in the other side, if you don't think, if you don't feel that there is much of fungal tissue there, fungal material there, there's no point in opening up. There's no point. But if there is some some sort of an antigenic material there, then it's ideal. Okay. Yeah. 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 Definitely, definitely. The problem with local steroids preoperatively is it won't act, it won't go inside. Because of the because of the heavy load of material inside, it is very difficult for you to get it into the mucosa. It doesn't go inside. Possibly when you're giving systemic steroids, that is going to shrink. And then then uh, some sort of local steroids would might die. So you better have anyways, you better choice of systemic steroids, but you can't keep on giving systemic steroids. That's why you go in for local steroids. Now, there is a lot of literature on antifungus post operative. Again, there are again it is a gray zone. You're not very sure whether you should give or it can give, it is ideal to give. Still not very sure. Uh, what we don't do is actually where there is evidence is on uh, in, what's it immunotherapy, allergen immunotherapy. It, it does work well. Is is uh, in fact it should work well depending upon which which uh, fungus is involved. If you go uh, go for the immunotherapy, possibly it works well. But we don't do much there. Macrolides not in AFRs. Not in AFRs. It is in other. In fact, uh, macrolides are not used when IG is high. Here the IG would be high. Macrolides are used in low IG cases. Okay. When I asked for when I asked for antibiotic, he already said that it would be very bad. When he was preferring, he said it is it is not his opinion. Generally, you get staff on it. You can get a box supply. One millimeter is already set one millimeter. This is one millimeter. Again, the again the disease here is it's it's slightly different from the polyps we are dealing with, extensive polyps. Here it actually it is a definite hypersensitive reaction of the body against specific animals. And uh, now I think the more common organism is uh, 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 what is it? Demataceous fungus. Earlier it was aspergillus. Now it is demataceous fungus. Uh, it is a uh, clavularia bipolar disease. So, uh, so uh, don't think that would be much of a role. But still, uh, 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 if available, dupilumab is actually being extensively used or elsewhere due to cost constraints and availability constraints. We don't use. Theoretically, that should be a rule, but uh, we do have a specific cause here. That is a that is that is an idea. You have in other cases there is no specific. You can't pinpoint on a cause. Suppose you have an extensive problem set, you can't pinpoint on a cause there. It is a multifactorial. Here there is a definite cause here in AFRs. That is due to hypersensitivity against this particular fungal antigen. Okay.
Again, majority of time the erosions we see is doing this frightening preoperatively. Paraoperatively, when you go there, there won't be much of a problem. Invariably, you will be able to remove without much of a damage either. If you are careful mm-hmm. enough, or if you have seen the preoperative CT scan well enough, very, very, very difficult to put in the complications. ंग मल्टीपल पॉलिप इन द राइट nostril can you see yes without any preparation this is the left side and this is the dns okay and this this is primary picture and now this requires uh, you know preparation to reduce the vascularity to reduce or to improve the field surgical field and see what i am using these marrow cell pieces we cut two marrow cell in different different size multiple pieces soak them in saline and adrenaline this being young patient we have soaked in 1 is to 2 but only for topical use we never inject at uh, this topical preparation will give you along with certain other maneuvers the same surgical field what you achieve with the infiltration but with 1000 times more safe as a topical the first application of topical to the mucosa decongest the capillaries and prevents it further systemic absorption see this is the marrow cell being used as a vehicle to apply this adrenaline on to the mucosal surface we are not supposed to pack tightly to give venous congestion just just mopping with the marrow cell the beauty is this is atraumatic marrow cell and it can be pushed into narrow spaces it swells up and opens up the nasal space as well see after first application how the nasal cavity has opened up that is the beauty of marrow cell absolutely atraumatic simple application see this what i intend to do is intend to apply this adrenaline on the mucosal surface see this on the mucosal surface yeah thank you and the concentration you are using sir one in this concentration one being young young patient i am using 1 is to 2 2 okay this is one to in elderly patient you we can use 1 is to 4 or something but in young patient You can use even more concentrated, even the or uh, the pure adrenaline one is yeah, to one adrenaline. as well, yeah, yeah. because this is not going to be, this is not going to go to uh, systemic circulation. This is just topical. It's ultra safe, not to be, not being infiltrated, and this is very very safe, and it gives you the same field. what you achieve with the infiltration you don't have to keep the marrow cell for long as well application for couple of second will serve the same purpose what you achieve with applying for minutes together see this entire mucosa being decongested so this preparation take a couple of minutes and it really works amazing along with this other intraoperative preparation is we keep the head end of the table you know in the reverse trendlenburg position elevate by say 10 or 15 degrees to facilitate venous drainage along with that pilot pilot along with that we ask our anesthesia logist to reduce the heart rate so we expect them to keep the heart rate around 60 We don't ask for hypotensive anesthesia, normal tensive anesthesia only. The reason being the principal source of bleeding capillaries, not the large vessels, and the reduced cardiac output achieved by the reduced. 
is much desirable and more effective yes without yes. giving any cardiac or any you know uh, complication you can't to reduce the blood pressure too low an elderly patient who are cardiac cardiac compromised you can't use infiltration because infiltration going in the disseminating in the systemic circulation can have hazardous effects particularly in labile patients who are not very uh, strong from cardiac point of view so all this is important to reduce the bleeding and improve the surgical field now my next goal is see other you hardly see any landmarks at this point of time what only i see is the inferior turbinate the septum and the glimpse of the axilla and the glimpse of the middle turbinate which is pushed see compressed sandwich between the polyps and the nasal septum can you see yes very clear now my first goal is the luminal clearance of all these polyps under vision using my saver this metronic um, micro debrider see this is luminal clearance to improve the visualization we expect lot of distorted anatomy because of massive polyposis so you have to be accordingly ready to handle that see the multiple polyp and you see some fungal mucin also in between in between see this is fungal mucin yes operation bol do operation operation bol baad mein karne see that was fungal mucin and some constant irrigation with my assistant to keep irrigating as well this improve the surgical field as well he i told you the things are going to be distorted see this is distorted ancinate process can you see this is middle turbinate here and this is inverted distorted ancinate process can you see yeah this is because of polyposis massive polyposis and see the fungal mucin in between you can see see the fungal mucin in between so the ancinate is inverted the turbinate is compressed bulla is compressed all because of this extensive nature of the disease see in between there is lot of fungal material coming see that we still i am just doing this luminal clearance see some polyp medial to the turbinate can you see yeah. medial to the turb polyp medial to the turbinate is an indication strong indication for partial turbinectomy for future topical reach topical steroid reach and aeration to the olfactory region you see this is inferior part of the turbinate the middle turbinate yeah inferior part of the middle turbinate we'll show you see now after every step you can use again the merosel pieces we remove rinse them in saline and re use dipping in the same solution again and again throughout the surgery and at the end of the surgery we'll pack the same merosel soaked in steroid in the ethmoidal cavity so again mop after every step to improve your field how the field there how the picture there sir very clear sir. very clear very clear yes. and see the surgical field now my next goal next goal is see after every step two by two you have to reassess your landmark we have to be very careful about the landmarks in this particular case thoda pani dal see this is the inverted ancinate which i am just uh, biting through the through biting forceps that's the inverted ancinate
you have the extensive nature of the disease how wide an antibody would you make how how wide would you make the antibody middle mediator antibody depends upon the underlying pathology in this case with massive fungus requiring long term surveillance definitely i am biased towards giving a mega mega middle mediator antibody see this is Would upper part of the pardon would you come pre lacrimal not not pre lacrimal okay. regular mega middle mediator antibody that was a part of the unseen it now in order to create this middle mediator antibody what i am using now i have seen my unseen it here this engaging my reverse biting in the hyter semilunaris directed inferiorly biting through this anteriorly keep coming anteriorly until you reach the hard bone to open up to create this middle mediator antrosmy see this is the lower part of antrosmy and this is all full of fungus maxillary sinus we have seen is full of fungus so we have to give as i said the mega mega antrosmy that's the lower part of the antrosmy see this is the lower part of the antrosmy this is part of it this is going behind to variable distance sometime merging in the inferior turbinate sometime in the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone see that the remnant of the unseen it and this is my middle mediator antrosmy and there is full of full of fungus in the maxillary sinus that's the lower part of the unseen it horizontal part of the unseen it see this that's the remnant of the vertical part inferiorly and uh, this is all fungus see inflamed mucosa all pro see the fungus let me clean a little bit of it second way look at let me engage some fungus and get rid of this to give us more uh, clarity regarding identifying the landmark see how the maxillary sinus is completely full of this fungal material all is it all the list of See, full of fungus. All pachan le gaye. This is all funny. The part was just tip of an iceberg, full of fungus. Yes. See the fungus. Yes. You can dislodge with your instrument and allow it to come out. This is this material is quite cheesy because of the degraded eosinophils. this becomes so frustrating sometimes to remove it all it requires a proper flushing using you know high power suction hydro debrider see the fungus see the ball probe is a great tool to engage the fungus a chunk of fungus and bring it out
wall. So wall prop is a good tool. Wall. Yeah. Zero, zero. See this fungus. What I'm using is my ball probe. I'm dislodging a chunk of fungus. So this so logging it. So there was a question earlier. Why uh, AFRS is more or less unilateral in majority cases? Yeah, see, it starts with initially where the fungus is trapped. So mostly it starts unilateral. It can be bilateral. The next case you will see is going to be bilateral. Yeah, in course of time can be bilateral. But, but mostly to begin with, it is unilateral. It becomes bilateral later on. See this fungus, what all you need is a high power function, good flushing, right use of tools and see this fungus is not invading mucosa, not invading mucosa at all. Keep dislodging, keep removing. It's sometimes so frustrating to remove the CG material. And you have to do a lot of maneuvers, you know. Ah, flush hard. See, flush hard to dislodge. Again, we'll dislodge with the ball probe. Pardon? Since there is so much of disease, so much of disease anteriorly, why don't you go pre-lacrimal as well? Pre-lacrimal is again a head-on approach. You know, that's a good approach. If required, we do, but in AFRS, it is really, we have other options. We can go by the, you know, another port to the, this thing, uh, sublabial approach, another port to pass your instrument, section, debrider, whatever. Pre-lacrimal would be too invasive for this. Have patience, you don't need, in pre-lacrimal what you do, you make an incision anteriorly, raise the flap, remove the bone. Go head on and then replace the flaps to and suture them. So that's approach when we go for tumors in this region where we don't need a you know active surveillance very often. Pre-lacrimal, once you suture the flap back, you cannot monitor from the approach where you entered through. It becomes blind. So, like in JNA, we do dankers rather than pre-lacrimal because we want a Surveillance later on for the to monitor any tumor which is recurring or residual which is regrowing, whatever. So that is not possible to the pre pre lacrimal because you close the approach by the sutures again. Here, what I'll we need is removal of this fungus. So we can use another port to flush from anterior that is sublabial. We can push your divider, we can push your suction, we can 
push any other instruments from there in case needed or we can use hydro debrider as well as to dislodge this fungus we'll show you whenever required hydro debrider is an amazing tool which gives a high pressure water jet 360 degree we'll show you badi ball i told you you have to have patience this fungus removal requires a lot of patience this is very frustrating the degraded eosinophils give it makes it very very cheesy now again the big chunk is coming broken again we'll attempt see this being dislodged big chunk again if you have patient this has to come because this is not invading the mucosa again will dislodge see the beauty of the ball probe engage and summer solve the ball probe the aim is to dislodge suctions frequently get clogged because of this cheesiness sticky material again a big chunk coming again be more and more fungus getting dislodged oh yes <laughs> i 
entire sinus is full and expanded. Again, now looks empty, wash. See now? Yes. Entire mucosa is removed. We are not supposed to damage the mucosa, which is just inflamed and is going to come back to normal, bound to come back to normal. See this? As the Antigen being removed, the dead material being removed, and the topical steroid will ensue, will come. This mucosa is bound to come back to normal. Can you see everything? We'll see later with the 70 degree to see all the corners. But by and large, the, this sinus is clear now. So, if you have patience, you can avoid such invasive approaches like pre lacrimal or anything. Agreed? You need to visualize the antro infinite corner as well. Pardon? The antro infinite corner, we need to visualize. Yeah, we will see. We will see with the 70 degree. We will see later with the 70 degree. 100 percent, sir. Now, see, this is the upper part of the uncinate. The silence. That is the upper part of the uncinate. This is a very, very important anatomy. See my axilla is here. This is the upper part of the uncinate. Okay. This upper part of the uncinate is closest to the laterally to the orbit. And since here the orbit is expanded, yeah, this sinus ethmoidal cavity is expanded. Be careful. This is the greatest landmark for your lateral limit of the entire, you know, the section. Here is going to be your orbital limit and see the fungus is beyond, going laterally far beyond. Can you see? See how the fungus has gone far beyond. Coming out, see this. Yeah, if anybody has any question, please. You can take any time. See how this cavity opened up. This is all fungus. Almost like a nature's mastodactyl. Pardon? Almost like a nature's mastodactyl in the ear. Almost like a? Nature's mastodactyl in the ears. Nature's mastodactyl. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Same like. Same like. The cavity like that. See, I'm opening the axilla to the limit. I am opening the axilla here. That's a very, very important landmark.
See, still I am with the zero degree. Everything with the zero degree so far. Now I'll change to the angle scope to see around. So far, I've been with zero degree. See the cavity. Here I have kept the marrow cell in the maxillary sinus. That's the bulla, the compressed bulla. That's the turbinate, compressed turbinate. That's the lateral limit, lateral wall. You've seen the corporators. Yeah, that's the cavity. If model cavity now change to 70 degree to look up. We have seen the axilla up. I told you, follow the beak. That's the greatest landmark God has given us. Don't rely on anything which is not reliable. Beak is the most reliable structure in this region. So what you can do simply, see now I am with a 70 degree. Let me focus. See this, with the 70 degree, this is middle meatus. This is your maxillary sinus where your yeah, marrow cell is there. Then the upper part of the uncinate. And see the pocket where the fungus is. Can you see? This one not visible with the 0 degree. See the fungal pockets close to the lamina papyracea. We saw the lamina was pushed laterally. This is one. See remote. I am with the 70 degree now. And see laterally, that is the level of the lamina, lateral wall. That is the level of the orbit behind. See that? Plus all these mucosal folds. So that you don't leave any fungus in between the folds. See, laterally it is pretty clear that is lamina papyracea. This is lamina papyracea laterally. Now we will focus up. So, very, very important area. In minutes time, I will tell you the simplest landmark. See now, 70 degrees. This is your axilla. I will uh, uh, marrow cell. Simplest way to reach out the frontal sinus. will come. When you find, one can easily find the axilla. Once you find the axilla, one can easily find the beak as well. See, underneath this thick bone is the beak. This is the bulge of your bulla. Give me a reverse blade. Let me reduce the bulge to show you better. I will, this step I will do slowly to show you the frontal axis. Much better. See that? I am reducing this with the reverse blade. This hump of the bulla. Okay. Now see with the 70 degree. Wash. See with the 70 degree. This is ethmoidal cavity. What you saw? The expanded ethmoidal cavity on CT scan. Where we... We have cleared the fungus from here. Can you see? This is push the lamina laterally. See, that's the lamina laterally. Now, this is your beak. See some of the septations. In minutes time, I'll tell you to reach out the frontal sinus. No. 
एक्सटेंशन ट्रू एक्सटेंशन एक्स सी नाउ विद माई डिब्राइडर सी दिस इज योर मिडिल टाबिनेट योर मीडियल लिमिट कीप एन आई ऑन द मिडिल टाबिनेट नेवर क्रॉस मिडिल टाबिनेट एज ए लिमिट टू ब्रीज द स्कल बेस दिस इज लेटर लिमिट दैट इज लेमाइन ऑफ एपरेशिया वी कैन सी विच इन दिस केस इज पुस्ट लैटरली सो वी एवर रूम इथ मॉडल कैविटी बॉल प्रो यस सम फेप्टेशन आई एम गोइंग टू रिमूव now wash wash see where i am going towards the frontal see this is the beak this is the axilla just underneath the axilla see where i have i'll show you this is the hardest bone this is beak where i am running my debrider you have to stay between both the lateral and medial limits see the thickest bone let me palpate and show you See, this is your lateral limit lamina. This is your medial limit turbinate. This is axilla and underneath the axilla, this is the hardest bone. See, this is the hardest bone. That is the hardest bone. Can you see? So easy to find the beak, being the hardest bone. This is the hardest bone beak. And once you identify the hardest bone, just go behind it. Go underneath it. Go behind. You will be right into the. Okay. See, this is beak. I am going underneath the beak and beyond. That is your frontal sinus, where the fungus is occupying. It cannot be anything else than frontal sinus. See, just underneath the beak. Can you see yeah. what I had shown you in CT scan? This anatomy can never change. What about it? I'll show you. Push my section and show you. This anatomy can never change. See the beak in the middle. This is medial limit. This is lateral limit. In the middle is the beak, and see underneath the beak where I have gone. This is all frontal sinus occupying the fungus. See this again for everybody. This is the beak, and follow the beak where you go. Just the beak ends in the frontal sinus. This is all frontal sinus. See, this is the beak anteriorly and un behind the beak, just behind the beak. Mota. That is frontal sinus. Let me clear it. See, my beak is in view. This is my beak. Seventy degree offers you proper visualization. of all your landmark in this region to add on to the safety means you can see the bread you can see your medial limit lateral limit and stay in between if you stay close to the beak your entrythmoidal artery is far behind entrythmoidal artery is miles away from here you can say that is in different direction see about that is the frontal sinus that is the frontal sinus above see behind the beak that is frontal sinus see that is the frontal sinus now what we'll do patla this flush we will flush and remove this fungus and we'll show you the interior of the frontal sinus see the frontal behind the beak up and behind the beak see that i will flush this first yes wash see the fungus is coming hmm. 
Yeah. See more and more fungus coming out. See that is the frontal sinus above. They are under the Both motors. See now, this is our frontal sinus, just behind the beak. The only landmark I am taking into reference at this point of time is this beak, this thick beak. Everything is behind it. And see, it is, the sinus is full of fungus. Imagine how extensive the disease is. All fungus wash. We have to flush it, flush it, flush it. There is no other way. Flush. More and more flush to dislodge the fungus. See this? See more and more coming out. See more and more fungus there. Section. It has been dislodged. White, white. See, this beak is the obstacle. This beak is the obstacle and everything is there behind the beak. We'll flush it more. In approaches where you need to work more in the frontal sinuses, if you remove this beak, we'll give you head-on exposure. In the next case, we'll show you that is drop procedure. Then you can go and remove even tumors from within the frontal sinus. For tumors, more complex pathologies like CSF leaks, anything, any tumor in the frontal sinus can be tackled with the expanded approaches. There are a variety of Extended approaches, draft and their modification. See, up there behind the beak is the frontal. Flush. We'll flush more to remove the remaining one. Lying in the cavity, it looks like dislodged. Again, we'll flush. Yes, flush. There's a hyperdimethyl and a far lateral extension. Yeah, fungus will come like this. Fungus will come like this for far lateral extension. I will show you the case. Next case is that only. Okay. We'll show you the orbital transposition approach. Transpose the orbit laterally and go as laterally as you want to. Still, some fungus is there. See that? Could you see coming out? Yeah. Ball probe is an amazing tool. It can hold the fungus and dislodge. Come out. Yeah, it's still there laterally. Could you see? This is the interior of the frontal.
that is the fungus last piece coming out looks like see the big chunk coming out wash again we'll uh, flush and see see the mucosa is so healthy mucosa is never a problem because this is not invading again we'll go in frontal and flush it yes yeah Amazing frontal sinus now. Amazing frontal sinus debrider. See the wide open frontal now. Can you see all? Yeah. See the wide open frontal sinus. That's the frontal, completely opened up, wide, cleared of all the fungal material. So that is what we were looking at, reverse. See, so far we have been struggling with the fungus and fungus removal. And there is lot yet to come. We know in the sphenoid it is completely occupying. Now what I am doing at this stage, see this, we have seen the yellow them. We have seen the front, frontal there. See the frontal, this is the, see the reverse blade, we call it a skull base blade. Under 70 degree you can use it on the skull base under vision. Cutting edges are in my view now. See the bulla I am Fracturing from above. See the fungus. Now cutting anterior to posterior. See this? Yes. See everywhere the mucosa is intact. That is most important because ultimately the function is going to be served by the mucosa only. This is functional endoscopic sinus surgery. The mucociliary function is going to be served by mucosa only. So never remove the large mucosal areas. Same this, what is See, I am removing. Reducing this bulla. To make the cavity good. Now see the huge fungus in the suprabullar recess. The surface is pushed up there. Yeah. yeah. See this this one is the huge fungus. Which has pushed the skull base up. This one, massive fungus, which has pushed the smoidal roof up. With a big chunk of fungus, the brighter, more and more fungus being there.
just at the edge of the anterior artery. Section. With this massive fungus, you can expect the uh, artery running in the mesentery as well. See the fungus. What I will do? I will flush it. Section. See this. This just above the dura. See this. I am flushing out this, coming, coming out. See this? Gently, gently you have to dislodge and suck out. Just about that looks like the artery which is arching. This is a massive fungal pocket. Use. Let me clean the area a little bit to orient you again. See, that is your frontal sinus up there. Up there is the frontal sinus, up there. This is supraorbital recess. This one is supraorbital recess, this one. Immediately caudal to the supraorbital recess is the antithmoidal artery being there. See this here, running in the mesentery. Yes. And this is the pocket of fungus immediately caudal to the antithmoidal artery. There, there are a lot of fungus. See that, that is the dura. See the pulsations. Yeah. See, just anterior to that is the level of the anterior thermodal artery. See here, running in the mesentery here. You have to keep clearing, keep clearing this fungus. Pardon? All fungus. See about the entry model cavity. Roomy cavity. See how massive the fungus is.
फंगस इज ऑल एंटीजन डिब्राइडर दिस इज ऑल एंटीजन विच यू नीड टू रिमूव ऑपरेट करो ऑपरेट करो दस ईच एंड एवरी एरिया इज फुल ऑफ फंगस एंड यू हैव टू ऑरली क्लियर द फंगस फ्रॉम एवरी एरिया You start to thoroughly flush the cavity. Okay, sir. Well, that's it. Go there. See the fungus. See the fungus has been thoroughly cleaned off from the skull base region. This is what done with the seventy degree above. Now I can change to zero degree, and we have lot of areas uh, still pending. एट डिब्राइडर ये तो दे आ रही है नाउ विद जीरो डिग्री वी हैव वर्क अबाउ that was the pocket which we cleared off this is your skull base and this is dura directly that is your entrance model artery that was your supraorbital recess this is the middle metal endoscopy bed and kept the marrow cell piece
Now I will remove this part of the shelf of the bula. See this? This part. To go behind this one. See this? Part of the bula shelf. Even the ground lamella has been part of the ground lamella. All compressed. This is ground lamella. My lateral limit here is lamina papyracea all the way. See this? Every cell pocket may contain fungus. Open up individually, wide opening, no hidden mucosal holes. That you don't leave the fungus behind. Mind it, fungus is an antigen here. See, this is my lamina preparation lateral limit. All a small cavity fungus. That is the middle turbinate. That is the rem lamella. This is remnant of ground lamella. Straight motor of the section. Pura section. Oh. I told you in the beginning, it looks frustrating sometimes to remove each and every bit of fungus. Now I have changed to the high power fungus. See how high power section. This is high power section now I am using. See, cleared all. In one go it cleared all fungus. See that? This is two high powered section. Watch this. Patla section. Wash, wash. See now the posterior cavity. All clear. This is part of the ground lamina here. The brighter. That is the skull base, post model skull base. So you were talking about high power section. So how do you how do you? Pardon? You were talking about high power section. High power section. High power section. So this is my one HP section. This is amazing and this is very very important uh, to have once you are doing sinus surgery. A section backup is essential to you know expedite your surgery to prevent clogging of your blades. So, for the longevity of the blade, for the efficacy of the cutting efficacy of the blade curve. Now, see, I have removed the pack, pack from the maxillary sinus. And see how the maxillary sinus look like? 
Absolutely clear. This is maxillary sinus. This is ethmoidal cavity. All you know, expansion of the. This is all ethmoidal cavity. All clear. Everything. Most importantly, everywhere mucosa is intact. Can you see? See everywhere. Now going towards the postethmoid and sphenoid. Now see what I am doing. I am going in the ground level. At the level of the roof of the maxillary sinus, I am going into the ground level and take a medial route. See, I am taking a medial route here. This is point down. I am put put it. This is your superior turbinate. Can you see? Wait, see, I am taking a medial route and this is superior turbinate. This is nasal septum. What I am going to do is remove. I am not doing completing the posterior me here because I don't know how posterior I can go without knowing the landmark. So what I am doing, I don't want to damage carotid and optic. So what I am doing, looking for another landmark to go behind that is spinoid sinus ostium. So this is lower most part of the superior turbinate. This is nasal septum. This is superior turbinate. I am removing the lower most part of the superior turbinate. This is the lowermost part. And at this level, at the level of the roof of maxilla here, along the, see this, along the septum, not along the terminate, I have went inside to open up what? This is what? Sinoid sinus ostium. Can you see? Yes. Now I will remove this superior turbinate. See, this is medial to the superior turbinate and flush to the septum. Now I can clear anything staying anterior to it because if I stay anterior to it, my carotid opting is nothing is going to come. So now I will accomplish my post me quickly, staying anterior to this ostium. See the post floor. This is post me. I am completing till the level of this level ostium. Anything anterior to ostium, I can clear very, very safely. See the mucosa. Yeah. See, this is septation. See this? Now is the post model roof. See this, see this. Yeah. See how deep the post model is. If you go this laterally without knowing the limit of the sphenoid sinus, you can go and hit the. See, my limit was here. Had I gone straight like this without knowing that, see my optic now there. Would you see? Limiting myself here to the level of the sphenoid ostium automatically saves me from going laterally unnecessarily. Is that very clear? See the high power section coming. Bandha. Bandha. High. See, this is my high power section coming. See now, yes. Takes away so fast. Now, here in roof, some fungus lodged. See this. 
yaz alt atla bu sen ekor liyor ne des the posit model roof being cleared off see now very clear this for the onod situation see the optic now had i not known this limit had i gone straight from the doing post sit mode i think i can easily anybody can easily hit the optic now see that this is the optic now which is decent can you see everybody this optic now is decent and this is onod cell this is the post sit model cell which has gone beyond the spinot this is spinot and it has gone beyond the spinot deprived this is amazing example of this safer medial approach identify the sphenoid now i have done my post sit mode at me when after identifying the sphenoid ostium never do before you never know which case has onod situation now the last thing left is the sphenoid now see this is post sit mode See, this is post sit mode cavity this is sphenoid i am removing the party wall see this party wall see this party wall thinned out because of the disease because of the expensive nature compression see i am removing the party wall and widening the sphenoid sinus now which is jam pack with the fungus what is it See sphenoid, how full it is. Now my optic now is in my view. See widening, widening, widening the sinus sinus to the maximum so that we can remove the fungus from there. Just a minute, just a minute. Now the same strategy, ball probe. Engage the fungus with the ball probe and dislodge. See this? See with the ball probe. a gentle traction movement to dislodge see what a tool and the roof is eroded sinai pardon the sinai roof is eroded yes the sinai is eroded from uh, many places also wash section See now again. Construction. Yes. Now again, we have removed a chunk of it. See, the goal is to dislodge. Wall probe being a safe instrument, and direction is toward the midline. Again, a big chunk come out. Same exercise everywhere. The wall probe is a fantastic tool. Engage, dislodge. 
and very very blunt instrument see this again a big chunk again massive fungus in the sphenoid and ball ball probe is the man of the match another big chunk Another big one. Should be the high power section now. High power. I'm using the high power now. Yes. See this? See the beauty of high power. Cut so, out completely. So, friction is amazing. You know, tool. Another chunk. Are you working on the other side? Yes. On the left side. Not really. We show you the intersectional septum how it is pushed. See how much sphenoid is expanded and fungus coming coming. Another big one. This is high power. Oh, Another 
ब्यूटी ऑफ हाई पावर सी हाउ नाइसली द हाई पावर सेक्शन पिक्स अप Plus for any debris, any remnants, see big chunk in the tribal recess left. Looks like it is out. We'll reassess. Give me wash. We'll see with the seventy degree again everything. Then we'll use our hydro debrider for any debris left behind. Looks clear. What about middle term cross sections? Put no, put no. I don't know. Pardon? Middle term. Yeah, yeah. I I will reset partly in the end. And why not earlier? Earlier we are using it as a landmark. Still, we are removing only the inferior parts. Yeah, yeah. I I will remove now. Just see the aim of removal of this part. We do in the end, and it will not be a complete chop. The upper part can be preserved as a landmark for future. You know, only lower part. See now my access to this olfactory region for topicals to reach has improved. That's the aim. That's the whole aim of uh, doing that. And see this now; it is very stable. It is not going to fall back and close the ethmoidal cavity. It's still partial resection. Now I'll use the seventy degree in all sinuses, one by one. Last two maneuvers, and then this case is over. Next is ready. Next is J N A. The first of all, the maxillary. Okay. This is with seventy degree. You know? This debris may and going together. Yeah, I can see section. Some fungal material is still in the anterior recess. See with seventy degree. Could you see this? Yes, yes. 
can see that. That is a difficult zone to see with a zero degree. Wash for it. So are you using the forehand technique or only you are out there? Is that... Pardon? Not using foreign technique, this is a unilateral, yes, wash. See this? It will come out like this. Flush. Work it. Look, look. Give me a piece of Merosil. I'll mop out. Chota. Other guys. I'll mop out with the Merosil and complete maxillary sinus anterior leaf. There is a little bit of the fungus which is in the anterior part of the floor section. Between an inferior mass and a Not really. See, this mopping. Mopping. Can you see something? Yeah, yes, yes. Yes. See how it brings out. Some more. We'll do more. More mopping. Once more. Hard mopping. Mopping really hard. I'm very hard mopping. Remove they put anything left behind. Flush. Now we'll flush it. Super. You know, we'll flush flush under vision. Do that section, do that. Yes, popular more again. We'll flush under vision. See this absolutely clear. Yes, you can see. And again, there could be. Yes. See this now inside? Yes, you can see that. Clear. See, not even a trace of it could be a little bit more. Uh, is there something that would be some Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll flush it more. What do you want to do? One piece, I have a doubt. Yes, watch. Yes. Mop. Mop. Mop, yes. There is a question from the audience. Is there a role for hundred and twenty degrees for this? See again this hard mopping in this region. See now even the mucosa are being abraded. Hard mopping. Nothing is left behind. After that, we'll run our hydro divider also. Anyway, now we have seen maxillary. Now go on and see the sphenoid as well. There is a question from the audience. They are asking whether 120 degree scope would be of use here. With us? 
120 degree scope would be of use to see the nook and corners of the vacuum. This is 70 degree. No, uh, people are asking whether 120 degree would be. Can be, can be. See now, yes. See the interior of the sphenoid with a 70 degree. Yes, we can see. Again. And this is your clival recess. This is the intersinus septum, opposite side. See the septum. See the intersinus septum. This is clival recess. This is cell above this one. And the complete interior of the sphenoid. See that? Yeah, very clear. And now finally towards the frontal. See the frontal, we have already, uh, you know, seen a lot. This bone I will remove a little bit of the bone above the artery. Now, hydrodebrider boss. Even if slightest the fungus left behind, Will come with the vitro debrider. See this. What is this? I told you this is a water jet. See, I am going in the frontal. This is 360 degree rotatable. I pushed into this and now this is a jet. High pressure jet, 360 degree, you can rotate. The hydro debrider, 360 degree jet of water, high pressure water. Here's the pressure, see, look at the pressure, look at the pressure of the jet. Pressure, pressure of the jet, you can see, water, very high pressure. Yes, so what I will do, rotate inside the frontal sinus everywhere and cannot leave any fungus behind. Respect of fungus will be washed out with this. Yes. So that is about the frontal sinus. See that? Yes, very clear. Now about the maxillary sinus. Give me. What make is it? Is it, is it of metronics? The citro debrider? Yes, yes. Yes. Hello. See this blade going straight. Now I am rotating. Rotating. See this? Rotating more. Rotating more. This is 360 degree rotatable. See where in the anterior part where I am flushing. Yes, can you see? see yes, you can see that. It cannot leave behind anything. Similarly. For a sphenoid. See right in the right in the depth of the sphenoid sinus. See this? Yes. With so much erosion of the sphenoid sinus, would it be a problem to use the side pressure? Get the side no, 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 not really, not really. See the clean water coming? Yes. No fungus. So we mopped first with the 70 degrees, checked all sinuses, and finally used the micro, uh, this hydro divider. I can confidently say that no fungus is left behind. Agreed? Yes.
Zero degree, zero. To be so, sure before... That, to be sure that there is no perforated seal of leak, is it? No, no, no. This cannot perforate the dura. This is jet. No, no, no the other way around. If you are not sure about... Suppose you have created a seal of leak, then do this. Who knows? Wait, wait. See the final picture now with a zero degree. All sinuses, good. That's the panoramic view. That's the panoramic view. All clear, everybody? Very clear. See the maxillary sphenoid and above is going to be the frontal. This is my axilla. That was the beak above. This is the remnant of the middle cabinet. The nasal septum. And this was the lamina which is pushed laterally. Everything, uh, I mean, uh, everywhere the mucosa is intact. Now, the only course in the post-op period would be irrigation, irrigation, and irrigation with a steroid. That's it. That clears off everything. So, how long do you continue irrigation? Hmm. Hello? Change, change. 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 Hello? The next case is going to be JNA. Okay, uh, so how, how soon or how treatment? Hello? The yeah. DDS just want to go and, and, come, and come from the beginning itself. So, you are going to start it immediately? Hello? Hello? Can you hear us, sir? No. Can you hear us, sir? Hello? Hello? Can you hear us? Yeah, volume sir? but I Hmm? Yeah, Jane is next. Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear us, sir? Hello? Yes, sir. Hello, sir, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Okay, sir, when are we going to start the next case? Everybody is eagerly waiting for the next case. Just wanted to know. Hello? Yes. Next case is Jane. Oh, okay, sir. How soon I can start? See Dr. Shaheen on screen. Hi, boss. Oh, he's already on the screen. Yes, I could okay. see him. Okay. No, the, the, actually, what we are seeing is a CT scan coronal section. Dr. Shine, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear us, sir. Hi. He's a terrific all rounder of our cricket team. Dr. Shine plays with us um, uh, in our team. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you? Fine, 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 sir. Fantastic. So how is your, we have watched, we have how your batting, that. bowling going on? <laughs> I'm waiting for you for that so that we can play together in the coming time. Always, always welcome. Okay. I'll hand over the mic to Mr. Dr. Uh, so, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Pressure watching you. Uh, now we welcome Dr. Edikula, sir, senior consultant, ENT Lakeshore, Kochi, to give mementos and certificates to both of our chairmen, chairpersons. How was it? Hello.
Hello. Hello, sir. We are here. Moving on to the second case, we would like to invite Dr. Ramakrishnan, Senior Consultant END, Aster Mims Hospital, Kannur, and Dr. Susan, Professor of END, Government Medical College, Trivandrum. Dr. Vinod Felix, Senior Consultant, END and Skull Bay Surgeon, Kims and SUT Hospitals, Trivandrum. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Sir, are you ready with the imaging for the next case, sir? Hello. Hello, sir. Hello? Sir, you are audible, but are we audible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. So, do we go ahead? Yes, sir, please uh, go ahead. So, Dr. Ramakrishnan here from Kullam um, and Dr. Vinod Felix and Dr. Susan Madden will be chairing the session. Sir. Hello, I can see Dr. Vinod Felix on screen. Yes, sir. sir How are you? Sir. Fine, sir. I'm fine, sir. Thank you. Uh, are you tired or are you, are you going to start the next case immediately, sir? Do you need a break or is it okay with you? Oh, so nice to see you uh, here, active, interacting, and your feedback, your Inputs will be definitely helpful for everybody, including me. Thank you, sir. You are you are a guru, sir. You are the big boss. Uh, are we audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a minute. So, are you getting a, a scan on the screen? Yes, sir, we are getting the scan. So, this is a 12-year-old child. See, I'll quickly take you through the imaging part. Where the case is getting ready. Ready? Ready? No, ma'am. So, this is the first investigation we order when we suspect JNA. Young male with the nasal obstruction, history of bleeding, you immediately suspect JNA as a first diagnosis with a nasal mass on endoscopy behind. Once you suspect JNA, we are not supposed to take biopsy and we have to, you know, reinforce our diagnosis by means of imaging. And the imaging of choice here, first imaging is a CT angiogram. Yes, sir. Can you see the CT angiogram? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you some classical findings on CT angiogram and some abnormal findings also in this case. See, on CT angiogram, this is a lesion, this is the level of the pterygoid process on this side. 
This lesion is arising here and prolapsing down in the nasal cavity and nasopharynx on this side and on other side going in the infratemporal fossa. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Really see. It is at the same time eroding the pterygoid base. Look at the pterygoid, normal pterygoid opposite side and this pterygoid is eroded and from there it is prolapsing in the sphenoid sinus. Yes, sir. Can you see? It never yes, enters sir. the sphenoid through the natural ostium. It enters by either eroding the floor or eroding the pterygoid base. Yes, sir. See, that is how it is entering into the, projecting into the sphenoid sinus. And doesn't take any attachment inside the sphenoid. Here, this is the inferior orbital fissure where the tumor is not going. Tumor is prolapsing in the infratemporal fossa. Okay. That's the infratemporal fossa. This is the entire pterygoid which is destroyed by the tumor. Look at the bone of the pterygoid on this side and normal bone of the pterygoid on this side. Can you see? Yes, sir. With lots of, yeah, lots of these flow voids. You can imagine the vascularity inside. Yes, sir. Lots of flow voids. That is classical of JNA being a vascular tumor. Okay? Now, yes, this, this erodes the pterygoid base, but it doesn't enter the pterygoid fossa down. See, pterygoid fossa down is absolutely clear. Yes, it is the pterygoid base which is eroded. That is something to be noticed for this uh, uh, particular situation in this case. Now, the abnormal finding what I found in this case was, see, this is the, in the axial section. Look at this. This is the pterygopeltine fossa, normal pterygopeltine fossa on the opposite side. Yes. See, this, this is the posterior wall of maxilla. This is the pterygoid process. This is pterygopeltine fossa. And look at the pterygopeltine fossa on this side. Can you see? This is completely wide. This is the maxillary sinus wall which is pushed anteriorly. Holman Miller sign. Yes. And this has widened the pterygopeltine fossa. And this tumor is going laterally. Laterally, it is going anterolaterally and little bit posterolaterally in both sides. Can you see again? Yes, sir. And see the pterygoid. Base is hollowed out with a tumor inside. This is the commonest cause for a so-called recurrence. It is never a recurrence. It is always a residual tumor which is uh, regrowing again. And the commonest yes. site is uh, the hidden area which is in the pterygoid base. It yes. has a tendency to invade the haversial system of this cancellous bone of pterygoid and sphenoid, clivus. And wherever it goes, it, you have to pull it out intact so that you don't leave any possibility of tumor leaving behind and for the safer side destroy the pterygoid completely and that region drill away so that you don't leave any flush everything don't leave any possibility of a residual tumor which can regrow yes. now this yes. is the component going in the nasopharynx can you see yes sir lower down nasopharynx this is medial pterygoid plate this is lateral pterygoid plate this is lateral extension which has a little bit posterior lateral component and then more lat anterior lateral component. All clear? Now, yes. this has a peculiar, unusual anterior extension. See this? Which is rarely seen. Yes, sir. Clearly seen. And this, this makes the, you know, endoscopic surgeon's life difficult. The reason being, See the endo endonasal space on this side and this side. Yes, sir. This tumor is projecting inside the endonasal space like this and narrowed the space. Now, to approach this tumor which is coming far laterally, what would be our approach? We would be doing oh, yeah. modified dankers. I would be removing this medial wall of the maxilla as well as part of the lateral wall of the maxilla like this. And then we'll have a thorough like this. Thorough like this. Head on access to the posterior wall of the maxilla and behind. Can you see? Yes. See my thorough access? This will be the thorough access. These are the two which, see? This, after the access, we'll have this thorough access. With zero degree, we can see the entire maxillary sinus head-on 
will remove this posterior wall and look at the tumor behind whatever tumor is lateral to it will pull it this is progressing by the you know it doesn't take attachment at the progressing head but prolapses in the free area infratemporal fossa is a relatively area with less resistance and it prolapses in the infratemporal fossa and similarly we can pull it out inside so this modified dankers will give us give us a head on access the only thing which is limiting our access which we have to manage intraoperatively which is complicating the life is this this see this in this access this is coming in between this anterior yes. extension of the tumor which will reduce somehow so that we can maintain our visualization now this tumor is principally supplied by the internal maxillary you know and where is the internal maxillary located behind the posterior wall of the maxilla it comes in the in the pterygopeltine fossa so i will show you this ct angiogram the how the internal maxillary the vascularity this tumor is defined you have to see yourself assess yourself rather than relying on radiologists they can't furnish that much of the detailed information so now what i am going to do we'll show you the ct angiogram to track the vessel supplying this tumor number 1 number 2 see this tumor behind bigger the tumor behind where the vessel is see from coming from anterior this is the posterior wall of maxilla behind that is the periosteum and behind the periosteum in the most anterior compartment of the pterygopeltine fossa are the vessels so more the tumor behind more it pushes the vessel anteriorly that is favorable when you come from anteriorly now let me show you how to read the ct angiogram this is something you have to read yourself to make complete understanding of the vessel supplying this tumor let me show you now see this i am in the neck see this is common carotid yes sir can you see the common carotid yes sir this, this is the jugular this is carotid that the jugular this is carotid now i am coming up in the neck see in the neck this is your vertebral artery behind this is carotid artery is, is that clear yes sir clearly clearly Yeah, now coming up, coming up. This is dividing into external and internal. Can you see? Yes, sir. Changing the window setting. Yeah. See the. This is external. This is internal. Can you see very clear? Clearly yes, seen. Now see from external. The movement. Ex see the external is arising here. External is arising here, and the first branch coming from the external. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. this is either superior thyroid or ascending pharyngeal how to track this forget about the carotid now focus on this branch see focus on this branch branch is going down see the branch is going down branch is going down this is thyroid can you see this thyroid so this is superior thyroid artery can you see this yes sir clearly really ascending pharyngeal would go up now going up see this This medial branch looks ascending pharyngeal. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Very seen. This is ascending pharyngeal. This is looks like looking like facial artery that is going towards the mandible. Can you see this facial artery? Yes, sir. Can you see this is lingual artery? This is lingual artery. You can follow each and every vessel, and then now I am following the external carotid. Can you see my? I am following the external carotid here. Yes, sir. See my cursor. keep an eye on my eye my on my cursor see now at this point of time external carotid is giving few branches see as it moves towards the mandible see the branch number 1 this branch number 2 behind can you see these two branches yes sir anybody what are these branches anybody moving towards the mandible it gives off occipital behind and the posterior posterior regular auricular see this these are the two branches now follow this vessel behind the mandibles can you see here yes sir here it divides into two terminal branches see this the i am following the lateral one let me follow first the lateral one we'll come back see this lateral one is what superficial temporal one i am tracking this all the way this is superficial temporal can you see this yes sir clearly see going behind coming back coming back everybody 
Dr. Felix, can you see what I am showing? Sir, yes, sir, I am following. Now see the terminal branch second going inside. Can you see this? Yes, sir. This is what? Internal maxillary. Internal maxillary. This is our key vessel. Now I am following the internal maxillary here. Follow my cursor. Follow my cursor, the internal maxillary. See this internal maxillary? Yes, sir, clearly seen. Follow my cursor. Follow my cursor. See this internal maxillary? I'm going into the tumor. Can you see? Yes, sir. Curving. See how it is looping in the tumor. Can yes, you sir. see very clear? Clearly now fo follow my cursor. Where the branch is? Just behind the posterior wall of the maxilla. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Clearly see. This is the posture wall of the maxilla and this is the vessel. How useful the CT angiogram is. Unimaginable. And you have to track your cell. Radiologists cannot give this dynamic information. What radiologists at the maximum can say that this vessel, this tumor is being supplied by internal maxillary. That we all know. That information is as good as useless for us as an additional information. So now this is internal maxillary. Can you see very clear, Dr. Felix? And see how it is entering into the tumor. See, just hugging the posterior wall. Can you see? Yes, sir. The moment you remove the posterior wall, just behind the periosteum is going to be this vessel and entering into the tumor here. That's how this vessel is the principal vessel supplying this. See that? Yes, sir. Now, now, how is the... Where do we find this vessel inside? Let me show you. Sometimes you look for the vessel and you are lost. What my point? Yes, sir. With this CT angiogram, you can exactly define the three-dimensional course of this vessel where it has to be caught. See this. We saw this vessel just behind here. Can you see this? Yes, sir. In the axial plane. Now I'll take my cursor over here in the axial plane. See this? Yes, sir. Now, this will be in the coronal plane as well. The same. Let me pick up the coronal. Highlight the coronal now. We'll see the coronal. Enlarges. See, my cursor is right on the vessel. Can you see there? Yes, sir. This is the vessel. Can you see? Yes, sir. sir. Now, see the vessel. See how the vessel is looping inside. Tortuous course. See how the vessel is looping inside. See on the opposite side how the, how the vessel is coming. Look at my cursor. See here? Yes, sir. How the vessel is coming in the tumor. How the vessel is coming in the tumor. Amazing Dr. information Dr. here. Like this. See how the vessel. Now, now what we get the idea out of excellent, it. Sir. It's a very excellent information. We actually we never seen somebody teaching like this. First time we are seeing somebody breathing the CT and you so very well. Thank you, sir. Welcome, dear. See now the complexity. This big is the tumor mass which is coming anteriorly. I told you this is complicating our life. This is going to go uh, going to complicate our life definitely. With this big mass coming anteriorly, this will prevent our posterior visualization into pterygobeltine fossa. See this, how this is like a pot coming anteriorly. Secondly, this will reduce our space to maneuver our instruments as well. So we'll do something with the cobulator to, you know, uh, shrink, shrink, shrink this uh, entire mass and going behind. Now see. See, this mass is here and this tube, this vessel is coming behind here. See, at this level, what we can see, I can catch my vessel over here. What level? See, this is the level of the palate. That's the level of the palate. That's the level of the palate here. That's the level of the palate here. And this vessel is going to be, see this, that's the level of the palate. This vessel is going to be now. To a rough idea, around 2.2 centimeter above the level of the pellet. Now I'll have a fairly good idea while looking for this vessel far laterally here. That's the midline. That's the midline here. 
this will be say this is here here see roughly two and half centimeter from the midline and 2.2 centimeter above there so i'll have a fairly good idea where to catch my vessel rather than poking here and there i will i'll have in my head this idea where the vessel is going to be and with experience you can pick up very well easily still the tumor distorts the vessel from its natural place so you have to have be very you have to be very very careful in identifying the vessel because the moment i identify i will clip this and devascularize the tumor to major extent and so that i can remove it endoscopically see how valuable the ct angiogram is that's the point i wanted to make out next Sir, is what will you do if you if you're not able to isolate the vessel pardon in a scenario can you can you, you can you speak a little bit louder vessel? can you speak a bit louder Sir. please so what will you do if you are not able to isolate the vessel not able during to the identify the vessel yeah yeah during the surgery what i will do i'll mobilize the tumor and come on the lateral surface of the tumor and go deeper this vessel comes from behind ultimately you will get that there ultimately you will get there staying on the tumor where the vessel enters the tumor from behind so you have to mobilize the tumor a lot in those situations that makes your life difficult sometimes now coming to the mri certain important features on mri quickly see this is the tumor which is like a pot coming anteriorly that's the tumor going behind in the infratemporal fossa see how the tumor is going down in the infratemporal fossa right to the level of the palate we have to pull it out and looking at the big mass see this is tumor occupied in the pterygopeltide uh, pterygoid fossa projecting into the sphenoid this is the posterior lateral projection posterior lateral projection this is anterior lateral projection what we'll do at the edge of the see the lateral wall of the nose at the edge of the lateral wall of the nose here will after catching the vessel will divide the tumor here plan division will divide and remove the medial part first will acquire space in the nasal cavity and then mobilize the lateral part into it that's how we are going to remove it so my most of the time 90% of the time in this tumor surgery will be invested in will be invested in what exposure 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 modified danker superior exposure medial exposure catching the vessel and then finally will mobilize the tumor in the end in the next ten, last 10% of the duration anybody has any question i am not going de in details of the rest of the imaging findings just quickly i can uh, put certain things for the see this another another important investigation uh, sequence is the diffusion weighted see this diffusion bright bright diffusion means more and more west fluid content with the tumor had this been this restriction would have been malignant tumor sometimes you get a nasopharyngeal mass in children and diffusion weighted mri can clearly you know distinguish whether it is a benign or malignant tumor malignant tumor has more nuclear cytoplasmic ratio less water content this benign tumor has more and more water content and showing no diffusion restriction bright it would have been dark had there been a malignant tumor number 3 is the involvement of the pterygoid bone i told you the pterygoid involvement is the biggest region for uh, you know so called recurrence see here this is pterygoid fossa this is pterygoid body and this is the greater wing of sphenoid in this fat suppress imaging let me put fat suppress and non fat suppress imaging this is very very important to prevent recurrences this is non fat suppress t2 weighted now i will bring bring a uh, this is fat suppress t2 weighted imaging let me bring non fat suppress first yes this is regular t2 weighted imaging see this 
This is the pterygoid fold contains the marrow fat. This is the greater sphenoid bone contains the marrow fat. Fat enhances on T2 weighted. Any MRI, any sequence, fat enhances. Now, this is what on this side is fat suppressed. Can you see the difference? Yes, sir. This is fat suppressed. The fat is suppressed dark, T2, both T2 weighted. And this is a fat, non-fat suppressed. You see the fat. On the opposite side, see this. In this fat suppress imaging on this side, this is normal suppress because the fat is suppressed. Now, on fat suppress, if there is something bright in the pterygoid region, that means there is tumor. This bone is infiltrated by the tumor. And this is such a vital information to drill away this bone completely. Otherwise, you are bound to leave the tumor behind, and that is the commonest cause of so called recurrence. So, we have to thoroughly drill away this pterygoid to remove this tumor. And that is best seen on fat suppress imaging. See the fat suppress pterygoid on this side and look at the fat suppress pterygoid with this tumor inside which is still enhancing. In spite of suppressing the fat, if something is enhancing in this tumor case, it's a tumor only. That's it. So, MRI has various sequences and we can take the advantage of all these sequences to optimize our, you know, information. This is very, very important for everybody. See this T1 weighted imaging on this side. See T1 weighted, the fat is bright everywhere. Look at the pterygoid and the greater wing of sphenoid on this side and look at the ter See the greater wing has a marrow fat is still, but the pterygoid fat is lost. This pterygoid fat is lost means there is tumor. Dr. Felix, can you, um, um, uh, are you, are you trying to get what I'm trying to say? Yes, these sir. are, these are special MRI sequences which tells you the hidden component of the tumor, which is not visible even on CT scan or any other investigation. Do you also look at the greater wing of sphenoid? What? So do you also look at the greater wing of sphenoid, the matter of the greater yes. wing? Yeah, yeah. This is the greater wing. Partly this, this is the. Lateral part of the greater wing. See the greater wing on this side. Yes, sir. This marrow fat. See the marrow fat in the greater wing laterally, but not medially. See this? So okay. this is all. And the pterygoid completely destroyed by the tumor. Or fat. The bright fat is replaced by tumor. As simple as that. Okay, sir. So these are the special sequences by means of why MRI is so versatile. If somebody asks me why MRI is done for this region. To get diffusion weighted to rule out malignancy, to get these sequences to rule out cancellous bone invasion, which cannot be picked by a CT scan. So this is such a vital information, and this you have to pick yourself rather than relying on radiologists to give you all this information. So let's uh, get on to the case. The case is almost ready. In a couple of minutes, we'll be uh, with you. For the case, sir, okay. Sir, one doubt, sir. Yes, please. Hello. Sir, if the if on CT angiography, if the vessel is found to be behind the tumor. Pardon? Pardon? If the vessel on CT angiography is found to be behind the tumor, main famous I didn't get your question, please. If CT angiography, if the IMAX is found behind the tumor. Yes, if IMAX is coming from behind the tumor, that is the indication yes, for embolization. Okay, sir. That is the indication of embolization. Then, because before tumor handling, you cannot catch the vessel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then you will get into the tumor and it is going to bleed heavily. So, if the I'm vessel is coming from the behind, like if you have a rich Rich uh, vasculitis coming from ascending pharyngeal, you have to embolize it. You cannot handle that vessel without mobilizing the tumor. No, no sir. How often have you seen the vessel being posterior? Sir? Rarely. In le in our practice, we embolize in less than ten percent. Now we say less than five percent of the cases we embolize. Okay. Okay. Sir. Mostly in the revision situations when you develop aberrant vascularity. Then it is mostly required. In primary situations, rarely, rarely required.
हेलो सर सर रिकॉर्डिंग ओके सो इन कपल ऑफ मिनट्स विल बी अवर द एंडोस्कोपिक पिक्चर पैक कर दे पैक कर दे Sir, do you ever expose the neck and tie the carotid temporally instead of embolization? Yeah. 
ऑन करो इसको हेलो सर सर डू यू एवर एक्सपोज सर नेक्स्ट सर नेवर डू यूर एक्सपोज वाइफ वाइफ नो इन केस यू आर नॉट एबल एबल सिटी इज नॉट अवेलेबल Hello, sir. In case the facility for embolism is not there, do you expose the neck and uh, so that put a temporary clamp on the? Such a proximal embolization is never going to work. You have to have a distal embolization at a microvascular level. If you even if you catch the external carotid, that is not going to make any difference. That is not a end artery. See the okay. tumor surface. Yes, See the sir. tumor surface. and most of the bleeding is on the surface see this yes sir madam what i will do pack again and again pack with the see i am not using marocell here this is not like sinus surgery here the major bleeding is arterial and you have to do other maneuvers i'm using these uh, adrenaline shock the ribbon gauges we are using hypotensive anesthesia as well anpam bolana unlike fes so this is a different pathology see the peculiar thing about this anterior extension in this tumor see this yes sir see this is how it is pushing the lateral wall see like this Yes, yes, yes. See this lateral wall. The lateral wall of the uh, nose or the medial wall of the maxilla is pushed laterally. Okay. By the tumor mass, which is coming anteriorly, and this is coming from here. See this tumor, which is coming from here. See just behind the medial tabinet from the uh, tergopeltine fossa. Could you see? Yes, sir. Now my man of the match during entire surgery is going to be the coagulator. for the regions we'll discuss again and again so i told you the biggest source of bleeding is arterial though there are other sources also venous and all that and major from the external carotid branches see what i am doing since most most of the vascularity is on the surface do surface coagulation this solves the, not only the purpose of reducing the vascularity on the surface but at the same time it shrinks the tumor as well to give you more and more space okay yes sir i think the audience must actually see that he just touching the coagulation it's not actually pressing on it this just brushing the coagulation the coagulation mode over entire tumor hello Yes, sir. We are hearing. Doctor Felix, there is a lot of noise in the theater. Can you speak a bit louder, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. There, now you are audible. See what I am doing? The surface coagulation. Whenever more and more surface of the tumor coming in your visualization, do more and more surface coagulation. See like this? Yes, sir. This will not only reduce the vascularity but more importantly this will shrink the tumor and give more and more space so 
the will the tumor get attached to the inferior and middle turbinate at this region have you ever seen like that middle inferior middle turbinate will the tumor get attached to the mid, middle and inferior turbinates yeah it is commonly attached to the turbinates particularly middle turbinate not the inferior one and here also see this is attached to the middle turbinate we always dissect the part of the middle turbinate wherever it attached to it is commonly attached to the nasal septum rarely attached to the nasal floor or the sinus mucosa these are tumor characteristics section ka main section powerful nahi hai turbinate section is the coblator section is poor take the powerful section more and more surface coagulation will help reducing the vascularity and allow it to shrink see this yes, so sir. with your instrumentation with your instrumentation even if you inadvertently you know touch your instrument it is not going to bleed so profusely that is the advantage of uh, you know lagado surface coagulation more and more surface coagulation improves your visualization see this before doing the dankers the surface coagulation is very very important because sometime your instrument may inadvertently poke into the tumor so this is my initial uh, tumor surface coagulation i hope the visual eye the picture is good there yes sir very good clear over here okay so coagulator is a tool which maintains your visualization now see this is axilla here is going to be your orbit so i am removing this uh, mucoperiosteum say a centimeter below the axilla uh, defining as a level of the uh, you know your uh, floor of the orbit i'm coming anteriorly till the piriform aperture yes sir I'll show you. See the piriform aperture. Yes, sir. Clearly seen. See the edge of the bone. You are not supposed to come into it. Otherwise, you can inadvertently damage the hella of the alar cartilage. Now, see, I am removing all this mucoperiosteum. all this micro and see coagulator what a tool yes sir see this vessel coming from the bone these yes, are facial arteries these are these are facial artery branches see this yes sir never ever try to run over coagulator over it otherwise that can ruin the coagulator vein so they colored it colored on this bone what i will use the section cautery insulated section cautery see this yes sir the picture okay or you can use a diamond both can work if this was the insulated suction cautery monopolar could you see yes sir so never run your coagulate now see this is inferior turbinate can you see 
This is a separate bone. This is a separate bone. That's not a part of maxilla. And see my level below to the level of the floor of the nose. This is the inferior turbinate being elevated. Yes, sir. That's the inferior turbinate, part of it anteriorly. See this? It has a major vessel coming from behind as a branch of stenopalatine. See the visualization, how it is maintained. Yes. Cobblator, cobblator, cobblator everywhere. See the medial wall completely exposed. Now I will come to the anterolateral wall. See how the cobblator expedites your procedure. See the subperiosteal. This is the anterolateral wall. What is this? Anybody? Anterior superior alveolar. Yes. Anterior superior alveolar neurovascular bundle. See this? Yes, sir. This leads to anesthesia, paresthesia, or upper incisor and uh, canines, but it resolves with a period of time as it has numerous interconnection that regenerates the sensation again. Yes, sir. You can go laterally wherever you want to. Uh, the standard has been, um, you know, to the level of the infraorbital neurovascular bundle, but nowadays, after the Paul Casanova introduced the uh, the technique of transposition of the infraorbital now, we can go even beyond. No limits. We can remove 360 degree. See another branch of the infraorbital, entry, entry inferior alveolar. Yes. Cobulator. See this? What a tool. See this? Now, I will punch out this thin bone anteriorly. This bone, once we remove, will take you inside the maxillary sinus head on. Okay? Thin bone can be punched with a lux. See what is there behind this is nasolacrimal duct. Yes. Now, where to enter into the maxillary sinus? How much of the, you know, of this wall can be removed? What is the limit above? Is the orbital floor. So we have to define the orbital floor so that we don't accidentally enter into it. Find all my books. Wait. See some periosteal ooze. Never mind. Now see what I will do. I will enter into the maxillary sinus and show you what is the level of the roof. Okay. This is my metronic high speed drill. Successfully. See, this is 15 degree cold diamond bar. Okay. Entering head on into the maxillary sinus. See this? We'll show you the level of the roof. Till then, we have to remove the bone. I could have done this with the chisel and hammer as well. Actually, idhar karna.
मैच का विंडो सक्सन See, this is a lateral ball which is pushed laterally. Could you see? Yes, sir. In this case, we have seen the lateral ball is too laterally pushed by the tumor mass. So, you don't want to cut out. See, this is inside the maxillary sinus. Can you see here? Yes, sir. This is the, you know, the. See, this is the lateral bulge of the medial wall of maxilla. Can you see this entire? Yes, this sir. This is the pushed laterally. If you remember the MR CT scan, if, yes, you, if you remember how this anterior component has pushed the lateral wall. Okay. What you have to define the interior of the maxillary sinus and the level of the roof. Just see this. Good be very clear now i will define the cavity better by going a little bit more laterally let me decongest from inside by pushing the ribbon god this will mobilize the wall as well as decongest. See that? This is all lateral wall which is, you know, pushed from here. Section. See, this is maxillary sinus lumen. See the yes, sir. Secretion. See the secretions. This lumen is pushed laterally by the tumor. Okay? Yes, sir. See, once I remove the gauze, you will be able to see better. See the maxillary sinus from inside? Yes, sir. Clearly seen. See this bulge of this wall. I told you this will complicate our life. I told you if you remember. Yes, sir. Real. A little more inferiorly to flush with the floor. Thinning out this bridge of bone so that I can punch it out with a carry the lux later. See, more and more bone, I'll remove more and more. Yes. Mm 
This is to see the level of the roof. See much better inside. Yes, sir. Clearly seen. See the level of the roof, that is most important. The one doubt here. So, do you have any problem with vestibular stenosis when you do this approach in extended in endoscopic not dangles? Really. Why, why? We are not creating any raw area, circumferential raw area. There is no question of vestibular stenosis. See this? See this? There is the posterior wall behind. Can you see? And tumor. See this tumor bulge. I told you this will make our life difficult. Can you imagine? Yes, sir. This bulge. This is because of the anterior tumor which was bulging into it. Now, see this. This bone I can remove now until nasolacrimal duct. That is NLD. Yes, sir. Very clear? Clearly seen, sir. Nasal acrimal duct. That is nasal acrimal duct. That is the upper part of the duct, you see. Now see, oh, you know, this is the level of the floor of the orbit. Can you see? Yes, sir. Clearly seen. At this, till this level, I'll remove this bone and cut the duct at that level flush to the orbital floor. Orbital floor. It's circumferentially removing the bone. Circumferentially. The duct standing out prominent. Important thing is to define the level so that it doesn't overhang. Overhanging duct can get fibros and then epiphora is the likely thing. See this duct at the level of the orbital floor. Can you see the orbital floor laterally? Yes, sir. Orbital floor seen clearly. See clearly? Hold. At this level, see, this is the level of the orbital floor. I will cut it flush. That's it. See, see above where my duct is. Let me press in the lacrimal region. Can you see? Yes, sir. See this above? So, this will no longer interfere with our other work. I hope you got my point. Yes, sir. Cut flush. See now, the area is very clear. No duct is going to come in between. This is the lateral wall. That's the lateral wall which is pushed. See this. That's the lateral wall. See how the tumor has pushed the lateral wall. See, this is the pushed lateral wall I am dealing with. Yes, sir. Thinned out.
that transkinate process behind here i am removing the lateral wall and flush till the posterior wall superiorly my limit is very clear orbital floor this is all lateral wall being removed this tumor has made difficulty by means of push coming anteriorly and pushing the lateral wall laterally see this much the axis is narrowed see my direction of the blade is away from the tumor see that yes sir much better exposure of the posterior wall now yes sir this tumor is like a pot in the anterior nasal cavity the brother such a big tumor usual component coming anteriorly generally doesn't come i told you in the beginning that this will definitely make our life difficult and we have to do something to it all the time we have to keep pushing it medially to expose the posterior wall see i am flushing the medial wall till posterior wall see there Yes, sir. This is the posterior wall of the maxilla, and this is the medial wall removed till behind. See this. Yes, sir. Posterior wall looks thinned out. See now the entire maxilla is exposed. See the mucus of the posterior wall. I can remove. See the base of the tumor from behind. Yes, sir. Clearly seen. Later. Oh. This now I'll do something more to this tumor to shrink this. As more and more this tumor surface exposed. More and more coagulation to shrink this. See this? Yes, sir. What an amazing tool it is, coagulation. It contains suction, irrigation, coagulation, cutting everything in one wand. That's why we call it magic wand. See now the medial wall bulge is much reduced. Can you appreciate this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Earlier it was not allowed to visualize the posterior wall. Remember. Now the posterior wall is clearly seen. So I told you we'll do something. Before when mangwa ke rakhna. It is complete. No, wash. Give me a, a little uh, drill. See now the exposure. Much better. Yes, sir. My ninety percent of the time will be invested in exposure, exposure, and exposure. Needless to say, this 
this projection I am flushing with the floor, so it doesn't, um, you know, stop my instrument. Otherwise, that limits your instrumentation, Debrider. Of later. Uh, monopolar cord. See some oozing from the bone. Can you see? Yes, sir. Clearly don't, seen. Don't ruin your cob later. You can use monopolar. Just mm -hmm. the more and more monopolar is wash wash. Pilot. See this our excess. This what we have done so far is anterior and anterior lateral excess. Okay. Yes, sir. For the shoulder. Yes. Hmm. Now will is the time to go to the posterior wall. So that's the posterior wall behind. Not there, no? I'll shut up goes there. But they're pushing it medially, this tumor. See this? Another power to push this tumor medially. Can you see? Yes, sir, clearly seen. See now the posterior wall is exposed. I push with the gauge. See now the entire posterior wall is in front of you. It was otherwise so difficult. See, this is the posterior wall. Looks thinned out. I, I, this bone is thinned out because of the tumor mass pressure coming from behind. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am cracking this bone. Hulk, hulk. Yeah. Can you see me? See, I could have drilled it as well. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Since the so bone why, is why, thinned why, out. So, why didn't you use the drill, sir? I can crack easily. See this? Okay, sir. See this? Yes, sir. 
possible removed it is much faster much easier why to use drill unnecessarily you can already see the vessel i think oh i have not seen no oh, that is on the periosteum that is not i i max i max is behind the periosteum behind, behind the periosteum पेरियोस्टियल वेसल कैन यू सी दिस I can run my carburetor on such periosteum vessels. See this light carburetion. Are you using the carburetion? Yes. Or is it coagulation? Ah, uh, coagulation, not cutting. Okay, and it is not head down. I mean, it's not end down application. It's through the. Pardon? It is no. You are not applying it end down onto the periosteum. It's through by the side only. You know. Yes, through the peri on the periosteum only. Okay, sir. That is very fast bone removal, sir. Hmm. Yeah, the bone is uh, was already thinned out. See this? See this bone piece again. See when you remove this, see what you come across, you know, branch of greater palatine. See That's here. That's inside the in the channel in the canal, This one, this one. See the medial removal of the bone. See the medial bone removal. Yes, sir. I'll leave a small piece of. Put this cell on the raw surface because it keeps on oozing otherwise. Hmm. This is very very important. On the tumor surface, if slightest the oozing. Better to keep the surgery cell and then keep it pressed with the gauge. See like this. Yes, sir. This will keep your tumor away as well. Very simple. Some more bone will remove. I'll call the doctor. See the periosteum torn. Can you see the yes. fat? Yes, sir. Fat, fat. That means you are lateral to the tumor now. See the sinful temple hosa fat. Yes, sir.
I'm exposing more and more. That's the inflammable fossa fat. Yes, sir. Clearly seen. I can ease out a little bit of it. Now, see, this is your periosteum. Can you see? Yes, sir. Can you see the vessel behind? Yes, sir. Clearly seen. Can you see very clear, everybody? Hello. Yes, sir. The loop of the IMAX. Yeah. Show me the coblator. Yes, yes, Oblator. See the vessel? Yes, sir. So, you'll be using clips uh, after delineating? 100%. Clip is the safest way. So you are doing forehand technique now? Not really. My assistant is using one hand. To either irrigate or suction in between. Okay, okay, sir. <laughs> This is excellent teamwork. Your suction is being applied. It feels as if you are you yourself is doing the suction. Excellent teamwork, sir. See, this is the tumor surface. What I have exposed is the tumor surface. Could you see? Yes, sir.
Because all tumor surface I am exposing. Yes, sir. We can see. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm more and more staying on the tumor. Tumor, We'll show you. Acquiring more and more space. Yes. The surface is best visualized with a coblator. Yes, sir. Some more periosteum, I will cut this. Oblator. Periosteum cutting this. In between, I use the cutting wood to cut anything. Now I will go lateral to the tumor into the infratemporal fossa. See the exposure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These out some of the infratemporal fossa fed. See lateral to the tumor. Yes, sir, we can see. Can you see very clear the tumor surface? Yes, sir. You can see. Well, we'll show you something very important. See, that is the last end of the tumor. See the last edge of the tumor. So the last edge, yeah. See the interior of the infratemporal fossa. Yes, sir. Everybody. Clearly seen. Sir, do you usually remove all this much fat from the infratemporal fossa? Not routinely? really, just to show you. Just to show you. And see the vessel. We have to ultimately define this. See the exact lateral surface. Yes, sir. Would you? Yes, sir. These are the infratemporal fossa muscles. Now let me uh, pack for a while to show you some more.
Yeah, give me a pack for a while. See the entire tumor. The tumor is smooth on its surface. See very clear. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Just to show you the anatomy of the infratemporal fossa. See this. Yes, this sir. This space occupied by the muscles only. That's the tumor, and this is the vessel entering the tumor. This is this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chodo. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vessel. Hai. Guru. This is the vessel. This one, this one, this one, this one. Hmm. See the vessel entering the tumor. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see? Yes, sir. Clearly seen. Yeah. See how it enters from behind the tumor. From lateral to the tumor, this is all vessel, you know. So, see the lateral extension is not so much. Could you see? Yes, sir. We could easily get over it. All limits are in our control. Except the posterior and the superior one, which we are going to take very soon. Hmm. No problem. I am on the surface of the tumor, if you see carefully. Yes, sir. Just skeletonizing the tumor surface. What is there above? Anybody? See this? V2. V2, yes. Superior and laterally the V2. Or later. Sir, you will be clipping the vessel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is the lower part of the tumor. It was going so low. Yes, sir. Whole tumor, you can see. This is the vessel. This one. This one. Yes.
Donc, Just a minute. Can you see my vessel? Yes, sir. Clearly seen. Okay, so can you give me the clip, please? IMAX, IMAX. See, on the tumor surface, see the location. One more? Yes, sir. Quick. One more. Have long one. Huh? One more. See the big vessel. Yes, sir. Excellent, sir. This is doubly secure. One clip away, you could see. Yes, sir. One below and two above. See this vessel segregated. Yes, sir. See the vessel human. Yes, sir. Clearly seen. Vessel is segregated from the tumor and there are three clips at distant places. Now it cannot bother you anymore. See this? Yes, sir. Entire infant apple fossa is in our control. This is your V2. See above. Yes, yes sir. This is your tumor. Okay. Leave it. Now I leave it here. As the tumor is devascularized from this side. Give me a pack for Arigaya. Uh, give me a pack. See this? So one of the exercises is over. Yes, anterior, sir. Anterior, anterolateral, posterolateral, exposure. Going into the pterygobeltan fossa, reaching the tumor lateral limit, and clipping the IMAX. Now I'll complete the superior, medial, and posterior medial exposure, and then we'll divide the tumor and remove it. Okay? Yes, sir. excellent, sir. Now this is your middle turbinate. See this? Yes, sir. Give me the brighter. Other middle turbinate. I can cut this middle turbinate. From here, now my in superior this section in the sinus, my medial limit is going to be the lateral limit is going to be the lamina papyracea. This is the unseen right here. Yes, that is the unseen head. See the lamina laterally. Yes, sir. Clearly yeah. seen. That this is anterior cavity. I am doing ethmoidectomy. Yes, sir. See, going behind, doing ethmoidectomy. Just quickly finishing the sinus part. 
as quick as possible. There's a part of the bulla and see behind is the superior turbinate. That is superior turbinate behind. Yes, sir. This will take me right to the see this defining my superior limit quickly. I am not demonstrating sinus surgery, so I am doing this as quick as possible. आपको स्टेबल रखना है एक जगह रखना है हम्म तो पता है ये तो सिर्फ एक मॉड एक्ट में ही है सर Defining the superior limit of my tumor. See, this tumor is there. Defining the superior limit. Oh, no, sir. Yes, sir. This tumor is here, and this is your superior limit. Coblation. See, superior surface, some oozing there. More the tuber surface come into view, more coagulation you have to do. This is the nasal septum medial part. I am coagulating. See the tumor surface, no bleeding at all. Yes, sir. Now going behind. This is superior turbinate. Yes, sir. Where is going to be the sphenoid sinus ostium? Medial to the superior turbinate. Yes. Yes. See this. Very Along easy. See, this is superior turbinate. Medial to it. Medial to that. Medial to that along the septum. This is my sphenoid sinus. See this. Yes, sir. I could see the sphenoid. See the sphenoid. Interior of the sphenoid. Look at this. See the inferior part of the superior turbinate I am cutting through. Yes, sir. No compromise with the exposure. See the sphenoid sign is very clear now. One by one, look at the exposure. In sphenoid, the tumor is coming. See, projecting. Yes, see this tumor there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You saw on the scan where it is coming yes, from. Pterygoid. 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 Right. See, this is the pterygoid behind. This is the pterygoid process behind this one. Yes, sir. This is harboring the tumor. This pterygoid is harboring the tumor, which is going there behind. Yes, sir. Let me expose it better. Still, I am removing the bones from over the tumor. See the more and more tumor getting exposed. See the yes, tumor. Clear, clearly seen. Much better. Much better. See the entire tumor in continuity. Yes, sir. Uh, 
पल्सर So the Vidian will be there. Vidian. See the entire tumor in continuity. See this tumor in the. Yes, sir. Let me go ahead. How it is going to the sphenoid? See this. Yes, sir. So can you show the Vidian? Pardon? Vidian, Vidian. Vidian. Let's see if it is available. We'll show you most of the time. With such extensive pterygoid destruction, median is destroyed. Okay, sir. We'll show you landmark later. See the tumor coming from here. Give us some time. See the tumor, and in continuity going behind. Can you see? Yes, sir. If you remember the scan. The entire tumor, public. See the superior exposure of the tumor, and whatever tumor is exposed, I will coagulate. See this? Yes, sir. See this component in the sphenoid. This one. Yes, sir. And this is the component coming from here. We'll divide from here and remove it later. Now, this is the nasal septum. See, this tumor takes attachment to the septum. Okay, sir. Operation. I told them. Told them operation. See, see this. This tumor takes periosteal supply from wherever it attaches to, and septum is one of the commonest area, and here it acquires bilateral blood supply also being in midline. Yes, sir. See this how it is being separated. Yes, sir. Clearly, tumor being separated of septum seen clear. Yes, I sir. hope the visualization is good there. Oriented. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So is it getting attached to the nasopharyngeal muscles also? Adan? The the prevertebral muscles are also are they coming into? Never, view? never, never, never. Very osteum only, not muscles. See now, medially, this is the septum and this is going in the nasopharynx. Yes, you sir. You see? Yes, sir. Like oh, was oh, the point? Uh, yeah. yeah. See the tumor surface bleeding. Yes, sir. See this periosteum attachment bleeds. Yes, sir. You can see. So that. So you are now in the nasopharynx now, sir. Pardon? The dissection is being carried out in the roof of the nasopharynx now. Retropharynx, I am going to go. This is the superior surface now, completely exposed. Fine. Now I am going medially. See this towards the medially and then behind. And this septum is the obstacle. Can you see? Yes, sir. So I cannot be... take the control behind because posteriorly it is attached. Posteriorly okay. it is attached to the periosteum of yes, the nasopharyngeal roof. What can I do? What can I do? So you will be removing the posterior end of the septum, sir. Of the brush set. Yeah, I will remove the posterior most part of the septum to reach out there. Okay, sir. And then in... quickly we will remove the tumor. Okay. See, this is all exposure which is required. There, my dear.
this is my constant irrigation which works you know okay sir you can see the medial surface visible publish yes, publish publish may yes, went to now see till from the anterior surface of the tumor see here yes, i will see this posterior 2 cm okay this sir. posterior 2 cm of the nasal septum i am going to remove to go behind yes. the tumor okay see this this small portion yes sir we can see that pata hai ye kuch dikh to nahi hai ne to idhar rakha kar rok ja rok ja will be using a punch or a drill sir for this pardon pardon will you be using a punch or a drill septum no sir for septum for both ah septum yes sir this will break oh nothing oh this so simple mm -hmm. that is beautifully done this, this comes easily in no time halka halka dala gaya see that's a deviation this is to give me posterior control posterior yes. medial control completely yes sir ऑब्लेटर सी द सरफेस ऑफ द सेप्टम यस सर वी कैन सी इट्स अ म्यूकोस ऑफ द ऑपोजिट साइड सर यस डिप राइडर इन द मिनिट्स टाइम विल गो बी हाइंड एंड सी दैट द स्पीनोइड साइनस द इंटीरियर ऑफ द स्पीनोइड साइनस यू कैन सी फ्रॉम हियर यस सर Oblator. So the bleeding is from the opposite side, septal branch of spina palatine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Midline has bilateral supply. And it has attached to the nasopharyngeal roof in the midline. Uh -huh. There's attachment there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I am going behind to segregate the vasculitis coming from opposite side. Okay, sir. After this point, I will divide the tumor. Okay, sir. So the tumor will be completely devascularized to major extent. Yes. Sir. now this is your the computer eh? see the bone removed yes sir see entered in the opposite nasal cavity ah you opened
See the opposite terminates. See the tumor in the nasopharynx. See this tumor surface in the nasopharynx. Can you see the nasopharyngeal surface? I am coagulating that periosteum of the opposite side. See the opposite use second tube. See the opposite use second tube there. Can you see the nasopharynx opposite? Hello? Hello? Audiovisual. I am segregating the opposite blood supply. Yes, sir, we can see that. See, that is opposite side. Yes, sir. It, it doesn't take yes, attachment to the adenoid surface. There's okay, no point sir. in doing anything over there. See, okay, above sir. the periosteum level, and here I have segregated. Okay? Okay, sir. Now, see, no, this is the periosteum blood supply which I am coagulating on the roof. Yes, sir. See, right on the bone, coagulating yes, the periosteum. Yes, sir. Very clear? Yes, sir. And that is opposite side. Okay, sir. So now I can mobilize my tumor. See, my tumor, the posterior medial yes, exposures. Yes, sir. Crystal clear. Yes, sir. And I'll keep a pack over there. See this? Yes, sir. Everywhere yes, sir. I'm working. Now see all the exposures. Anterior, anteromedial, anterolateral, posterolateral. Posterolateral. See this? That's the pterygobel time fossa. Clear? Yes, sir. And the superior yes, here, superior. Wash. See tumor from all around. Can you see this poor tumor now? Yes, sir. Now we'll divide this tumor quickly and remove it. Now is the time for removal. See this? Yes, sir. No, look at Look at no. I will, I showed you the bottleneck earlier. Yes, See, this is the, this is the area where we are going to divide. The bottleneck. That's the bottleneck. See? Yes, sir. See, Very clear. This is my level of the bone. See the lateral wall of the maxilla. Yes, sir. See the tumor divided here? Yes, sir. Clearly seen. This is Can you see? And that's the medial part now. Very clear? Yes, sir. Two parts, medial and lateral. See, this is the superior portion. This tumor once divided being pushed in the 
This component is coming out very soon. See, this, this, this is a part of the tumor, uh, which is uh, coming from the pterygoid, we'll remove later. See, this is the division. Don't do this, sir. At a time, we want to do this. Suction, suction. See, this is the pterygoid component which is bleeding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we are removing this medial component first. Quick. See, this is just pushing this tumor down, just a minute. Nothing, just pushing it down. Wait, just a minute. For sip. They are. Put short another. That's the pterygoid component. Can you see? Yes, sir. Clearly see. See, this is pterygoid component. Came out. Section See the, can you see the nasopharyngeal roof? Yes, sir. It's clearly seen. And the tumor so, is pushed behind. The, so the bleeding is. is see what I am showing. Just a minute. Section clog, my dear. Hmm. And hello. See this. This tumor is pushed behind. Can you see? Yes, sir. Clearly seen. Yeah. And here, this is terrible bleeding that will stop. And see here, I am segregating this attachment. See this periosteal attachment. Yes, sir. Nothing but periosteum. Okay. Little bit of the attachment is left. Can you see the attachment there? With this one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now. See the roof behind. Quick, hold this. And this is going to be out. See this, this periosteum tenting. Can you see this periosteum tenting? Yes, sir. With all periosteum attachment I am removing. Or what, sir? Yeah. Midline. Midline of the Hold this. Hold this. It is out from here? Yes, sir. The... Hmm? See, the tumor is pushed in the oropharynx. Could you see? Yes, sir. My lateral component is left behind, the small lateral component. And pterygoid will see them. What we could do is, we could remove the medial part easily. See, this is the venous bleeding when you mobilize the tumor here in the pterygoid region. Could you see this? And this will stop in no time. Stopped. Is a section 
all okay yes sir all okay excellent see this is venus uh, pterygoid ooze that will go away now let us deliver the tumor from behind first and then we'll come to the lateral part all dry yeah mouth opener and depressor suction now come to the there is a suction suction see the tumor behind yes sir oh my god massive excellent sir excellent see this medial component the big one big round of applause from the audience oh with us so the big one has come out and now we have ample of space in the nasal cavity that's why we deliver the medial part first so whatever lateral component now how big is whatever big is the lateral component you can mobilize in the nasal cavity now that is a cake walk i tell you bringing the lateral component out is the easiest part now niche garni che now this is our lateral component see this yes sir that is our infratemporal fossa see that infratemporal fossa now better clearly see this clearly component seen. see the vessel yes sir clearly seen see this tumor it was going down we pulled it you can mobilize wherever it is going to yes sir and now we will remove it see the vessel on the surface it has to be separate and see that yes sir the tumor is coming out so easily i told you put on the record me se bhi aaya this lateral component removal is a cake walk ट्यूमर इन दिगोइ ट्यूमर रिमूवल इज अक वॉक आई टोल यू इट इज कमिंग आउट टू द नोज ओनली सी दिस Yes, sir. Fantastic. So lateral in less than two minutes because we now we have now ample of space in the medial part of the nose. Are you ready? Wash, wash. Now we'll get thorough wash and focus on the pterygoid, the key area. Yes, sir. See this infratemporal fossa. This is my IMAX, which is clipped here. Yes, sir. This is the pterygoid fossa below. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. No, they pack the ratio, sir. In the medial part on the muscle. Leave it. Leave it for a while. See now, my focus is in the pterygoid. Now, see this. 
Hey, this is the periosteal region. Can you see? Everything yes, okay. Now my focus would be on pterygoid. See, that's the floor of the sinus, sphenoid sinus. I'm removing. Yes, sir. Now, this is your pterygoid bone. See the pterygoid fossa. Yeah, that is the pterygoid bone. Inside yes, of the pterygoid bone. Oblator. Wait, wait, wait. I want to show you the pterygoid fossa. See, for everybody, this yes, is sir. medial pterygoid plate, this one. Yes, sir. This is lateral pterygoid plate, this one. Yes, sir. In between is what? This is pterygoid fossa. Pterygoid fossa. Yes. This is lateral pterygoid plate and the muscle here, it is lateral pterygoid. Can you see? Yes, sir. This vertical muscle is what? Temporalis. So, lateral to the lateral pterygoid plate. This is lateral pterygoid plate. Lateral to this is infratemporal fossa. And this is your greater wing of sphenoid above. This one. Yes, sir. This is pterygoid fossa and this is nasopharynx. Now, I will... I will uh, see inside the pterygoid. Though we pulled and it came out intact. See this cancellous bone. Even if you leave a part of the tumor, it, see the cancellous bone. Yes, sir. Clearly seen. I will flush it thoroughly. I want, I can't afford even a microscopic tumor which can regrow. See below here, below, is the pterygoid muscles here, fossa below. So fossa is always intact. This tumor doesn't invade the fossa. Yes, sir. It invades the superior part, that is the pterygoid bone. And above that is, see where my ear, here, where my instrument here, what is there about the temporal lobe. Yes, that sir, is how it ascends into the temporal lobe as well. So now, We'll deal with the pterygoid component. Okay? Let yes, sir. <coughs> wash. Wash, remove all packs, wash. Now drill. Drip rider. See the panoramic view. Wherever the further tumor extension, this is the primary approach required and then you can advance your approach. If it, if it is going in the cavernous sinus, you can go from here behind, going in the orbital apex, going in the paraffinage space, wherever. Just next two, two minutes each for every extension. This is the basic yes, approach. Excellent, sir. Is required. Excellent. Yeah. This is your pterygoid fossa. Yes, sir. So, will you be drilling the root of the pterygoids? Yes, sir. Thoroughly. Thoroughly. This is the area which is the potential area to give so called recurrence. Okay, sir. They, see, I want to show you the difference in the pterygoid posa. And the uh, pterygoid body. See this. This is pterygoid body. Can you see the bone? Yes, sir. Above. And it continues laterally in the greater wing of the sphenoid. Yes, sir. 
This is pterygoid body, and it continues laterally as greater wing of sphenoid. See there? Yes, sir. This is your IMAX. See this? This is pterygoid body, and this yes, is sir. greater wing of sphenoid laterally as long as you want to go. Okay, and sir. below here, below here is the pterygoid fossa. See, this is the pterygoid muscle, medial pterygoid and tensor tympani muscle. They are yes, not sir. invaded by the tumor. Okay. Okay, so sir. now see the cancellous bone of the pterygoid which I want to drill away to ensure that um, no tumor is left behind. Give me debrider first. Before drilling, I want to. This pterygoid venous soothing is always there. Even the embolization cannot prevent the venous bleeding. And never ever try to foresee. I am not putting any pack in the pterygoids. The reason being, if I put any pack, I can force the tumor inside. Let yes, it sir. bleed. It is healthy bleeding. Okay, sir. See, this is your V2. Yes, sir. This is your V2, foramen rotundum. Yes, sir. Now, give me. See, this healthy bleeding, let it be. Now, one by one, see what I am doing. This is the greater wing of sphenoid? Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Can you see the bone I am flushing? Yes, sir. Greater wing of Reynard. Telescope. Sir, while drilling the greater wing, if you expose the dura, will you? Pardon? If you expose the dura while drilling the greater wing of sphenoid. No problem, no problem. Sometimes the dura is exposed itself. Okay, sir. See, all this cancellous bone has to be flushed to ensure that no tumor is contained within. Yes, sir. See this? Yes, sir. Wash. Sorry, oh, vessel ah. <laughs> drill nice. Yeah, yeah. Just give me a section. Hello, catch. Probably. Hi, Hmm. Just a all muscles around. Hmm. Yes. Oh, very. Really. Hmm. 
Uh, that was the IMAX, sir. Or what? Looks like uh, another branch to the muscles. Yes. Vertical, huh? See, this is Infra Temple Posa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see the vessel below? Yes, sir. What Wait a minute. See the vessel. Will you be clipping it again? Yeah, yeah. See, here it is. Just a minute's time, suction. See now? Yes, sir. One more. One more. See, I've clipped it below. Yes, sir. We saw. <laughs> so, this is to catch how to catch the vessel in the inflatable hosa. Yes, sir. For the leave it. Okay, sir. This is Venus bleeding, surrounding Venus bleeding. Hmm. Give me a small suggestion. So when we decide temporal hosa is rich in you know Venus plexus. See this pterygoid venous plexus. Yes, sir. This is, uh, sir when little we, bit of the... when you dissect in the infratemporal fossa this much, sir, do you have postoperative trismus, sir? Uh, not really. Not really. Okay, sir. So, suction. See this? Clip yes, that, come surgery cell over the venous bleeding, and that's it. Okay, now see the pterygoid. We were drilling the pterygoid. 
can you see the cancellous or oh, one second can you see the cancellous bone of the pterygoid now sir yes sir you can see but most of it is gone now yes it is drilled away drill the way see this yes, here sir. here here above is the temporal lobe of the brain from here the tumor goes into the middle canal fossa okay see sir. this all sphenoid so this should how it is see this is venous bleeding immaterial yes sir These were the dural vessels. Could you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See the pterygoid. How the pterygoid is drilled away? Yes, sir. This is the way to completely ensure that no tumor is left behind. See this now. Wash. Yes, yes, sir. No tumor has been left behind. Do you understand? Ask what I am saying. And this is complete tumor removal. See that? Yes, sir. is venous bleeding we can uh, pack for a while see the entire anatomy how big the tumor was how the extension was how the anatomy correlating with each other divider publicator sir, sir can you show us where the median canal would be median canal would be somewhere here in the floor because it is there so this this is median canal see this this one See yes, here, sir. yes, sir. But since the pterygoid is destroyed, the median had to go. Very often, when the extensive pterygoid involvement is there, median is likely to be. Yes, sir. so this is all about just we'll pack for 2 uh, 3 minutes wash again and that's it we'll pack for 2 3 days yes sir that's so the final yes sir when will see you be the entire the panoramic view entire panoramic view what when will you be removing the pack sir 2 3 days okay sir This is the panoramic view. Yes, sir. It's beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the excellent demonstration. Next demo. Pass. Pass. What are you doing? Ask them. Yes, sir. Any doubts from the audience? I just go to the house. Tracing just go to the house.
We invite uh, Dr. Suresh Kumar, sir, consultant ENT surgeon at Kim's Hospital, Trivandrum, to present the mementos to the chairpersons. <laughs>
हेलो 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 मैं टाइम हो गया छह बजे निकलूंगा मैं now we are moving on to the third case and to chair the session i invite dr jyoti professor of ent government medical college ernakulam hello how many people are there in the auditorium watching just a five so there are five seven there five seven other hall is also running no uh, maybe that case is over i think that is more than other hall हेलो हेलो देखो बुलेस अरे मीनू पेशेंट को बुला ले ऊपर हेलो सेट हो गया सेट हो गया क्या पैक लगा दे बोल एक साइड में दिखाऊंगा सेप और एक साइड तुम कर रहे हो वी आल्सो इनवाइट डॉक्टर मैथ्यू डोमिनिक हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट मेडिकल ट्रस्ट हॉस्पिटल कुछ हेलो हेलो गुड इवनिंग हेलो गुड इवनिंग सर कैन यू हियर मी Yeah, can you hear me, sir? Hello. 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 हेलो आ रहा आ रहा आ रहा अरे हेलो सतीश डॉक्टर सतीश हेलो कैन यू हियर मी सर या या आई कैन हियर यू हेलो दिस इज डॉक्टर मैथ्यू डोमिनिक फ्रॉम कोल्लम इज आई वांट टू प्रोसीड सर्जरी हेलो हेलो सर या आई कैन हियर यू ओह सो नाइस आई कैन सी योर सीटी ऑन द Yeah, we yeah. we are ready. We are ready, yes, sir. We are ready with the uh, next case. Ah. And if you see the CT scan, yeah, we can see the CT scan. I know okay. the time constant. I understand your concern, time and other schedule. So we'll quickly. I'll touch upon some of the important findings in this particular patient. This yeah, patient sure. you see has a bilateral AFRS. You see the heterogeneous densities. Massive yeah, we can see it. Massive bilateral AFRS with. Full frontal sinus involvement with a special finding on the right side. See bilateral yes, frontal involvement, big frontals. Now, what is the problem? This side patient has proptosis. The reason yeah. being, look at the frontal sinus drainage pathway on this side. This narrowed pathway has prevented the drainage from the up, up beyond, 
and this frontal roof, the orbital roof is destroyed because of the pressure, because of non-drainage of this part and destroyed the orbital roof and projecting inside the orbit. Though yeah. it is non-invasive, so it is pushing the orbit down and outwards, giving the proptosis. You can see the eyeball compared with the opposite side. Yes, sir. So the concern that. is, how will this narrow pathway drain the rest of the rest of the frontal sinus? Yeah. So for such a problem, this is a very, very typical problem. The only answer, in my opinion, is a draft two on this side along with orbital transposition. What is orbital transposition? See, this bone, medial and superior part of this, this orbital bone is the concern preventing drainage of this part of the sinus. So in that, what we do? We do a draft two and remove this lamina papyracea up to the antithmoidal artery below, behind. And remove this part of the bone completely, the medial part and the superior part of this orbital angle. Roof of the orbit, medial part of the roof of the orbit and the medial part of the orbit. And push the periorbital laterally and allow a big drainage, complete drainage of the entire frontal sinus, wide drainage into the ethmoids. That is orbital transposition with draft tooth. That's the only answer. Now people can ask, why can't we do with the open approach? You can do a frontal sinusitis from outside. But the problem is you can do from open approach, but how will you ensure the drainage through this narrow bone, narrow channel? So yes. that is never going to work. The only answer is, a lifetime big drainage and which can be achieved only by removal of this bone. That's why uh, I will show this side only, rest other side I am not going to demonstrate. On this side I will do first uh, maxillary and the frontal path, rest the uh, ethmoids and the uh, rest of the sphenoid uh, you can skip later. So for the remaining time you have, I will show this maxillary, even the maxillary clearance we will do later and focus on this orbital transposition, draft and orbital transposition. So that how this entire lateral most part of the frontal sinus can drain into the ethmoids with a big opening. To, to solve this problem forever, that's the only answer, a stable answer to this problem. Otherwise, rest cannot work. So we'll start immediately in a minute or two. And... Um, and you can continue, you know, watching as long as your uh, schedule permits and we can continue your case afterwards. Okay, okay sir. Thank you. Okay, boss. Yeah. Okay. Can we start? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, we're starting, starting. Okay, sir, thank you.
फोन इधर रख दिया फोन देखना कि फोन एक तो जेब में नहीं दूसरा दूसरा देख सर ये हाँ हेलो हेलो या वी कैन सी यू आर यू गेटिंग द एंडोस्कोपिक पिक्चर नाउ या वी आर सी गेटिंग द एंडोस्कोपिक पिक्चर ओ विल गो क्विकली विल गो क्विकली या आई अंडरस्टैंड यू इज लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू सीइंग दैट वन ऑबिल ट्रांसपोजिशन या 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 सो आई विल गो क्विकली विदाउट वेस्टिंग अ मिनट सी द मैसिव पॉलीपोसिस फंगस Yeah, yeah, can I just waste one minute? We are actually holding the 2025 national conference in Cochin. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you. You'd be the first faculty we're inviting. That'll be 2025 January. Hello. Hello. Did you hear me? No, no, no. Really, can you repeat, sir? Yeah, we are holding the 2025 national conference in Cochin. We'd oh, like really? to take this opportunity to invite you as a faculty for that one. Oh, You're the really? first pleasure, faculty we're inviting. Pleasure for me, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. All the best for the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's such a massive disease. Okay. That's the middle terminate that you say axilla that you are saying now. All full of fungus. See the fungus. Okay. Fungus, fungus. <laughs> That's the ancinate you are saying now. Yeah, this this ancinate is okay. distorted. Okay. Right. That's 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 right. Yeah, we can see that. Yes. This is the bulla. Okay. We all full of fungus. Uh, okay. What I am keeping in view is my landmark middle turbinate medially. Okay, okay, we can see that. Yeah. I am just doing this as quick as possible. We discussed a lot about this in the previous case. Yeah. We have already discussed, so I can really go fast. Okay. So you're not doing any decongestion on this side then, this time, is it, that, sir? Little bit, little bit. I put a pack for a minute. That's it. Okay. okay. This is the maxillary sinus below. Yeah. See, Very full of fungus. Seen. Yeah, full of fungus. So I will remove it later at the end. Hmm. You have already seen that earlier. Yes. So just go right on to the frontal. See this? Maxillary is below. Yes. This is the lamina papyracea level. Yes, sir.
Adresini Whatsapp'a alın. Hmm. 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 मेरे को बता दो देता ही मत ये तो सॉल्व फंगस या दिस इज माय हाई पावर सेक्शन सी दिस यस सर See all fungus coming out. The yes, section yes, did not get chalked even once. If the high power suction, so there's a question from the audience. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah, is your high power suction custom made? Yes. Have you modified it yourself? Yeah, this is pure one HP. One HP, okay. Dedicated suction, permanent. Dedicated one HP suction unit. Where do you get it, sir? Means not being used for any other purpose. Yeah. See now, this yes. axilla, I am still with a zero degree. Yes. And see underneath the axilla, this bone. Yes, sir. This is beak. Yeah, that's the beak, right. And beyond the beak, where my section is going is what? Frontal. In the frontal, frontal recess. Yes. This is still with a zero degree. Hmm. I have not changed to 70 yet. Okay, you still on, still using the zero degree, is it sir? So far with zero degree only. Okay. Now we'll change to 70 very soon and show you up. That area is at point. See, see the pus coming yeah, out. Yeah, pus coming out. See, see, we can see that, yes. Fungus. See the ethmoidal roof, anti ethmoidal roof. Yeah, we can see that, yes. Pretty clear. This is the beak here. Yeah, we can see that, yes. That is the frontal sinus behind. Okay, okay. So now, wait, I will go for the draft too directly to save time. Okay. See the, after the irrigation, see a lot of polypoidal disease coming out from the front. See this? Yeah, yeah we can see that, yes. This is after irrigation. Now, draft means you remove the buoy, beak and then you see the frontal sinus head on with zero degree. Okay. Okay. Now see. See, I am with a zero degree only. Okay. okay. What I am doing? See, this is axilla. Removing yes. this mucoperiosteum. 
about the big uh, about this axilla yes with the coblator coblator okay this superiorly anteriorly is very safe zone there is no critical structure there hmm hmm anteriorly there is no critical structure the posterior the limited lack... skull base medially okay. here the anteriorly there is nothing the bone has to go now posteriorly as i go behind my posterior yes. limit is going to be the first olfactory neuron yeah okay, okay. the cribriform plate starts see behind till where the cribriform plate starts till then i can remove anything that is going to be my beginning of the cribriform here okay see the stems of first olfactory neuron can you just demonstrate that the first olfactory neuron pardon can you show us the first olfactory neuron yes. area of that one okay see this yeah okay that's the neuron coming out okay okay that you can see that is yes. medially this medial one why yeah okay 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 so i am not going to go behind that okay, okay. that is going to be my was not anything yes, yes. anterior to it till skin till outside the skin anything anterior to it i can remove so quickly okay. if i remove this beak you will see i will reach into the orb into the frontal sinus head on with zero yes, degree sir. i am with zero degree only okay sir. yeah now see viru kanda par main pani bada pata hai see now i am defining my limits see the level of the axilla i am drilling this bone below the level of the axilla laterally to define yes. my lateral limit that is outside the skin okay see the change of color see the yeah, skin outside the skin yeah. yeah we can see that see this if i press on the outside the skin see this hmm yeah okay yeah. Yes, sir. So this this is going to be my lateral limit. Yep. Similarly, go anteriorly till anterior skin. Okay. Now I will not. This is my limit, so I will not cross it laterally to give a button hole. See the outside skin. I'm going anteriorly. without any fear right on see you can quickly do it i will quickly do it in no time of letter I hope you are oriented where exactly I am working. Exactly, sir. We understand. See, with everything with a zero degree. Yeah. Now this being my lateral limit, see this. Yes. I will drill away, staying medial to it, and remove this bone. See this. Yeah. That is the floor of the frontal sinus, and okay. reach the frontal sinus head on in couple of minutes. Yes. and very soon you are going to see the frontal sinus with zero degree Is that my lateral limit the outside skin? No, yeah, you're almost at the. Oh, very safe. Okay. 
and yet very fast cutting. Hmm. Because I am using sixty thousand RPMs. Okay. See, with zero degree, I have reached the frontal thinus. See, this much of the yes. beak was the obstacle. Yeah, you almost at the frontal thinus. Opened. Oblator and forty. With zero degree, I am in the frontal sinus. Above the frontal sinus. This is outside skin, soft tissue. This is your frontal sinus. And see, this is all your frontal sinus. Yeah. So there's fungal mass there. Yeah, okay. 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 See this frontal? Mm. Yes, sir. This is all disease within the frontal, and I am with all straight instruments. Suction valve, motor. See this all fungus within the frontal sinus with zero degree. Yeah, very clearly seen, sir. Great demonstration, sir. All this fungus I am removing. None of them are There is so much of fungus inside. I will show you with the angle scope later. But this is the frontal sign of widening. Now, see, we have to. La, la, la. See now, there's still there is a lot of bone to remove. Yes, sir. You have to go to the limit. Limit is what? Skin everywhere. Yeah. This lateral skin is going to turn anterior skin. Hmm. So next session is supposed to be at 5 o'clock. We will extend it for another 10 minutes. Yeah, most likely. Okay, right. My draft is going to be completed in the next 5 minutes. Yeah, okay. Yes. See how much bone needs to be removed. See the anterior skin? Yeah, we can see that, yes. Same lateral skin turning to anterior skin. Can you see very clear? Yeah, we, we can see it very clearly, yes. And that is the limit. Okay. Now I am turning medially. Yes. Remote. See all this frontal sinus, big frontal sinus. You're still working with the zero degree? Yeah, still with zero degree only. In the north end. Still with zero degree only. See the frontal sinus medial part? 
Yeah, we can see that. Yes. Now I will show with a 70 degree. Okay. The interior will flow. Will flush out interior and will show you the orbital roof as well. Okay. See the 70 degree view. Yeah, we can but see the that. Can see this all. is laterally towards the orbital roof. See this. Can you see, can you see laterally towards the orbital roof? Yeah, yeah, we can see now. Yes. See, now I am flushing the frontal sinus to clear it off. See the fungus dislodged. See that? Yeah, yeah, we can see that. Yes. Huge fungus. This is now high power section. I don't know if it's bad. It's a little bit too far. You're not using your water jet for that? We will, we will. See this major chunk. This is a big one. Yeah, we saw that, yes. And that's the orbital roof, is it? It's still there in a lot of fungus. Now see, this is towards the roof. Can you see this? Yeah, we can see that, yes. See, this is towards the orbital roof. Yeah. Take this. See, this is toward the orbital row. Yeah, we can see it. Yes. And this is not reachable. This part. Yeah, okay. For this, we will do transposition. Because we have to establish the drainage, this part. See this? Yeah, we can see that, yes. So what I will do now, hold the head. Hold the head, somebody else doesn't have to stand up. Hold See now with a 70 degree. Our problem is this bone is the obstacle. Disease is up there. See this. Disease Which is one? up there. Can you see up there? Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Yes. This bone is the obstacle, middle wall of the orbit. Middle wall of the orbit. Okay, okay. This bone is the obstacle. So what I will do? Give me zero degree. Come back to zero degree. And remove this medial part of the orbital bone. So completely give a wide drainage to it. That's it. See with zero degree again? Yeah, okay. See the disease is above the orbit there. 
Yeah, we can see that, yes. Again, see, divide it here above. Okay. See this? Yeah, we can see it, yes. And this is the obstacle. Okay. First, uh, it paid the brighter. So I will expose the lamina now. And next five minutes will be through the transposition. Okay. I'm exposing the remaining lamina. Okay. That looks like the internet model artery. See that? Yeah, we can see that, yes. No, give me. I will break this lamina. This lamina. See this? Okay, yeah, we can see that. Engineer, just at the crucial. Yeah, that's the most crucial step. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I'm not sure. Funny, right? No, not funny. See, this bone I want to break without damaging the periorbita. Okay. See, this bone is culprit, this bone. Yeah. See, this bone. Yeah, we can see that, yes. Very orbita can be pushed like this. Yeah, we can see that, yes. Very orbita. Medial, this is the medial part of the orbit bone, this one. Yes. And the above one is the superior. Okay. Publator, I will push this uh, peri orbita laterally. How can I will keep this, uh, you know, stout by using my coblation? Coblation is a very safe tool here. Okay. I will make it stiff so it doesn't fall back yes, easily. Still got bone there, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It is. I am pushing okay. this orbit laterally. Yes. Yeah. Just a minute and give me a divider. This one is the culprit. See this. Yeah. Now it has opened away the gateway. See my excess. Give my access to this part now. See how much disease there was? Yeah, we saw it, yes. There was no access to it. And now... Yeah, we can appreciate that, yes. The moment I remove the medial and the superior parts, more you want to remove, more you can. See, 
seeing how much disease removed there are. Not a removal. Removal we can could achieve temporarily. Mm. Mm. So long. We would like to break off drainage. in about another four minutes. Drainage. See the drainage to this area now. Yeah, we can see that, yes. This is most important part to give drainage to this area. Now I will show with 70 the roof of the orbit. See, such a, after removal of this bone, the access to the frontal and the orbital roof has widened. See that? Yeah, we can see that, yes. Still, there is a lot this of. Uh, still you know, some pus there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I will show you something. I am just pushing more and more periorbita. You can push as much as you want. Okay. okay. As long as you don't breach the periorbita, there is no contraindication, no complication. Now, 70. And we'll show the roof of the orbits from above with 70 degree, upside down. Wash and uh, suction. Look, okay, please. See with 70 degree? Yeah. And now see above. Okay. okay. See above the drainage. Yeah. Wash. See, okay, sir, I, I think... Working, I am working above the orbit now. See, I am in the roof of the orbit. Yeah. Okay. See, this is periorbital. Yeah, we can see that, yes. Superior periorbital. See this, uh, this one. This is superior yeah. periorbital. Can you see? Yeah, we can see that, yes. This is all superior periorbital. See this, this one. Yeah, we can see that, yes. But it was decent. That's why it was proptosis. Now the proptosis has settled down. The moment it is released, the proptosis has settled down. See, now this, and this has given a wide avenue. Yeah. See, my okay, this orbital roof, this orbital roof is now draining fairly through the you know, wide, wide opening into the ethmoidal okay. cavity. Okay, okay sir. Thank you very I much. We have, to, we have to take leave. We are going into the next session. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful demonstration, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, I am Dr. Sunil, organizing chairman of the KenCon. Sir, thank you very much for the excellent demonstration and we really appreciate your work, sir. Thank you for sparing so much of time with us and giving us the opportunity to watch your surgery. Thank you, sir. So we will move to the other section, round table.